Patterson and Michael Remus. Hey, what's going on, everybody? And welcome to a uh, ending up being probably quite a special edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Thought we were going to be getting ready to uh, set up a weekend, couple big hockey games for the Winnipeg Jets, hosting Alex Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals tonight, Friday night, then a big Central Division matchup with the visiting St. Louis Blues on Sunday afternoon. And then this morning happened. Um, the uh, sudden, and I think to most people, shocking resignation of Winnipeg Jets head coach Paul Maurice after just about eight years behind the bench here in the peg um, and handing the reins over to you know interim coach for the remainder of the season, Dave Lowry. Um, you know, in some ways, it's not surprising. We've certainly spoken at length about the um, ups and downs that this team has had. A couple, you know, a few very disappointing losses on home ice. Um, and the need for some sort of change. But, you know, considering the way things happened, uh, you know, with Buffalo, the Buffalo game, and then, you know, a couple days of practice, um, the timing of this certainly, I think, caught a lot of people off guard, myself included. Uh, we're going to be all over this story today. Um, we will have Ken Weave join us later on in the program in hour number two. Brandon Rowicki is going to pop by. And we'll also talk with Mike McIntyre of the Winnipeg Free Press coming up in about 25 minutes or so. Um, we'll also hear from Coach Paul Maurice, the former coach now of the Winnipeg Jets, um, Winnipeg Jets general manager Kevin Dayoff, as well as a couple of the players that spoke, including Andrew Kopp, who you know, I think is a perfect example of a player that, you know, over the course of his career, um, you know, was given quite a bit of opportunity for, from Paul Maurice and, you know, made the most of it to the point of where he is right now heading into, well, potential unrestricted free agency at the end of this season. Um, as we get going, I do want to thank all of our sponsors that make this show happen each and every day, including F Apparel, Vita Health, Culligan Water, Manitoba Battery, Royal Sports, Not Auto Corp, Little Brown Jug, Princess Auto, Boston Pizza, the Nick and Nicky DQ Group, Canadian Club Whiskey, and cool bet Canada. And of course, it is a Friday. We will, um, I mean, this is going to dominate the entire program for the better part of the next hour and 50 minutes. We will have time to squeeze in a, a marble race at the end of the program. So if you're with us on YouTube, make sure you stick around. And um, I, I'm kind of blown away at how many folks are already with us right off the bat of the program. If you are new here, welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. We do this uh, every day, Monday to Friday. We're live on YouTube at 1 o'clock p.m., and then uh, we get that into your podcast feed for the drive home around 3.30. So um, hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Do us a favor, hit up that thumbs up. And uh, fee feel free to interact with um, all of our friends that join us each and every day and entertain us all in the Winnipeg Sports Talk chat here on YouTube. Let's get Michael Remus in here um, to get things going uh, before we hear some of the clips of the press conferences earlier this morning. And then welcome Mike McIntyre in. Uh, Crazy day, Remo. I mean, I think everyone's head sort of spinning from uh, when we woke up. You were, in fact, the guy that told me about it. I was, you know, kind of walking around my place. Hey, what's going on? Paul Maurice resigned. I was stunned. Um, you know, I don't think it was a matter of the fact that some sort of a change was going to be happening. I mean, I certainly think we've all talked about that and, you know, what was the best to move forward for the Winnipeg Jets. Um but I'll tell you what, going to sleep last night after that wild football game, I was planning on, uh, you know, talking a bit of bombers, getting ready for the Jets weekend. I did not think that we'd be talking about a coaching change with the Winnipeg Jets this morning. Yeah. Hey, us. Uh, hey, everyone in, in chat. Uh, nice to see so many people here right at the start of the show. Pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Yeah, this is one of those days, um, you know, doing this job that you remember. Um, I remember when Paul Maurice was hired, you know, waking up to that message. And I really didn't expect it to happen. I mean, it's a game day. You know, usually the day after you lose an embarrassing loss to Buffalo is when the change is made. I didn't expect them to wait, you know, two days in this morning. 
So it was definitely a shock to me, and I called you pretty much right away. Um, but I think it was shocking, but I think it's pretty clear to everyone, and especially to Paul Maurice, which is what he talked at length about today, is that you know he's been doing this for eight years, and the only other guy who's been doing it longer is John Cooper, and he's won two Stanley Cups. And you know when you have performances like you have to Arizona, um, to Buffalo, in the one against Carolina, and especially after this Buffalo game, it seemed like he didn't have any answers anymore. Um, you know, they had, you know, excuses for, you know, previous losses, whatever they wanted to put it on. But I mean, he really had, he had nothing. He said they skated for 10 to 15 minutes, couldn't really put a finger on. And, you know, he decided it's seemingly today that they needed a new voice. And that was what he spoke at length about. And it seemed like they were all in agreement that he's done what he could, but he referenced law of diminishing returns. He's, and he had some great, great lines. It was, you know, honorable press conference. and. You know, maybe this is something that can push them forward because, you know, it's hard to watch the Jets and then watch Vancouver, who I thought was a guard, you know, oh, not a great hockey team, you know, bring in Bruce Boudreaux and go on this absolute, absolute heater. So, I mean, it's you know, very conflicted emotions. And, you know, looking at some of the players, has, I mean, people are saying, well, I don't think they, they, I don't think the players quit on him at all. I don't think they hate him. I mean, you look at Andrew Cobb, it seemed like he was at a, a funeral. Uh, you know, yeah. disappointment from all the players, all the players today. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's, uh, you know, Maurice obviously had a real strong relationship with that team. Um, you know, and we heard that from the players today. Um, but as the coach said himself, um, you know, he um, has pushed the rock as far up up the hill um, that, you know, he believes that, you know, that he can. And you know, uh, you know, a change in a, vo a new voice for this team, you know, is what's needed. And when you realize that, um, you know, usually you don't get the opportunity to realize that, to be honest. And I think it speaks to Maurice's place, the relationship he's had with the people that run this team, the job that he's done, certainly in their minds, um, that it came to this. But and we'll get to some of these clips. I think it's also quite clear um, that this wasn't just Paul Maurice waking up this morning and saying, you know what, it's time for somebody else to do the job. I mean, he was quite clear. I mean, they had conversations in the summer, you know, after a very disappointing playoff exit to the Montreal Canadiens, after that thrilling sweep of the Edmonton Oilers. And, um, and <laughs> you know, there was another very telling quote that if, you know, if this game against Buffalo doesn't happen, you know, are we having this conversation? Um, you know, there's some, you know, some, ugly losses earlier in the season and then they won a couple games or <laughs> he's talked about that as sort of preventing it i mean i think you know both from the top of the organization because mark chipman is very involved in you know in anything that happens when it comes to the people that are running his entire operation that includes business ops and, and other areas but certainly the importance of the hockey operation side he has been involved and has a very close relationship with those two men um and we didn't hear from mark chipman today but we did hear from kevin chevel day off and as we'll hear in a few minutes, I mean, I think there was a realization that, you know, after just about eight years, there it, it was a time for change. And we'd been speaking about many different possibilities for change because I think a lot of people thought that Maurice was going to get this year to see what they could do. Now, if they failed and they weren't able to get to the playoffs, I think everyone knew that at some point the change would be made. Um, but the fact that it happened when it did I think also speaks to the urgency of the situation of the hockey club and where they are right now, where they started, where they're at, the direction that they're going and some of the losses that they've had. So, um, you know, this really is a, a watershed moment for uh, for the team. And, you know, texting and talking with some people in the organization and around the organization today is going to be fascinating to see what this team looks like tonight uh, with Dave Lowry in his first game behind the bench. Um, because as you mentioned, Remus, I mean, there there was a there was a lot of shock. I mean, we heard from Josh Morrissey, from Mark Scheifele, and you mentioned Andrew Kopp and Adam Lowry. Um, you know, it sort of felt like you were listening to players speak for the first time after a coach was fired. Um, because I think at the end of the day, when there's a coaching change made, there's a reason for that, and it's what's happening on the ice. And uh, it was pretty clear that I think a lot of the players felt, uh, you know, you know, partly responsible for this, but also got the message that, you know, this team, everyone knows this team's capable of much more than they've been delivering right now. Um, the coaching change has been made, and now, you know, it's on the players to show what they're able to do 
and the confidence that this organization has in those players, because if that doesn't happen, um, like what they've been getting isn't been good enough, especially with what they're paying right up the salary cap and the legitimate expectations for a team that has this much talent in the locker room. Yeah, they're falling further out of the playoff spot here, and you're having these, you know, no-show performances, um, you know, the last couple of weeks. I think Chevy basically says, like, there's only so much we can do. This, you know, you got to get a spark somehow. Um, they they noted that Jamie Compon, you know, who hadn't been with the team, um, you know, because of family situation at home, he's with the team now. So they do have a number of bodies. Dave Lowry's the interim head coach. You know, we cue the jokes about Adam Lowry now getting first line minutes and <laughs> and top power play. I I do not think that's going to happen. We'll wait and see. I mean. The lines yesterday, you know, they did go back. Connor Dubois, Svechnikov, Stasny, Shifley, Ehlers, Kopp, Lowry, Tony Nato, Harkins, Gustafson, Veselainen. I mean, Dave Lowry speaking at four. I wonder what, if, you know, if we're going to see any meaningful changes to, you know, systems or, you know, usage. I mean, we'll have to wait and see what happens tonight. I think. There's yeah, be, tough to make a yeah, lot of changes I, just rolling into a game day skate. Uh, yeah, you got the I, Washington Capitals coming into town tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would imagine, and it's also important to note that I mean, Dave Lowry has been with this club. He's been an assistant coach. He's been in all the coaches' meetings. I mean, he would know this team as well as anybody outside of Paul Maurice right now. Um, and and the coach talked a little bit about you know where he's at, some of the ideas that he's had, and said it. But listen, just before we we get to all of this. Um, and hear from Maurice and Shevel Day off as well as a few of the players. The one thing that I, I do want to say um, is, you know, everyone has their own opinions on particular decisions and personnel matters. And, you know, that's part of the fun of being a fan. Um, but the one thing that I think has been eminently clear that even the biggest critics of Paul Maurice and what he did on the ice, um, the vast majority of them, I think, would all agree of what an absolute class act he's been. And honestly, what a privilege it's been to be, whether it be a fan, whether it be a member of the media, um, and hear Maurice speak to us on a daily basis about what's happening with the hockey club and sometimes things outside of the hockey club. Um, he has, uh, you know, I got a really interesting, in, uh, you know, I, I did a tweet earlier today, and um, it was very simple. It was one more memorable press conference for Paul Maurice in Winnipeg, all class on the way out. I don't think that's debatable. It was an incredible, uh, a very, I think, a fitting end um, to going out with the, with the Winnipeg Jets. But I, I, Scott Armstrong sent me this reply, and, and it, it stuck with me. He said, maybe it's just me, but I kind of feel like Paul Maurice wasn't just a father figure to many of the players on the team, but to a lot of us fans, too. He could speak to us like no other NHL coach, and today he set an example for all of us to, to live up into, into our, our lives. Um, you know, accessing the the uh, the situation and making what's probably a very difficult decision for him. Uh, but he certainly sounded like he was at peace with it. He believes that it's in the best interest of the team going forward. Um, and I think that that's probably a thought that's shared by the other members of management because he said this wasn't just a snap decision. There had been talks before this dating back to the summer. Um, and there'd been some ups and downs, but the way the team had been trending, some of the problems, the inconsistency that continue to plague the club, something did need to change. And um, it was Paul Maurice that, you know, that stood up and, um, you know, and is leaving uh, the organization. We're better off for having Paul Maurice with us. I think we're all more educated hockey fans. We've certainly been entertained. And my God, the people that make gifts on the Internet are going to be very, very sad that uh, Paul Maurice <laughs> is no longer the head coach of the Winnipeg Jets. Um, but listen, let's hear uh, right off the bat. As I said, Mike McIntyre is going to join us. Ken Weeb's going to join us. We'll talk to Brandon Rewicki about all of this as well, what this means for the team going forward. And now that the coaching change has been, where is everyone looking at and who do we need to see some real significant change from? We'll get to all of those topics going forward. But um, as I mentioned, a very classy exit today from the Winnipeg Jets. Paul Maurice spoke at the podium. Um, and, you know, the first clip we'll hear is uh, Maurice talking about why we're having this conversation today, why he's resigning and the fact of uh, the need for a new voice in that jet dressing room. So this is a good team. I'm a good coach, but sometimes 
when you take over a team and it's kind of like you're starting at the bottom of a mountain and you're pushing a rock up to the top, you can only get it to a certain place. And, and that's, that's where I feel I'm at. And if you would allow me some arrogance, I would say that I'm better positioned than anyone to know that they need a new voice. They haven't quit on me. They're a good bunch of men. My relationship is strong with all of them, and I'm cheering for them. I am. But when you have a 26-year professional hockey coaching career, you know they need a new voice. They, they need somebody to help them get to that next place. It, it doesn't need to be a more experienced necessarily, more talented guy. It needs to be a different voice because it's the right time for it, and I know that. All right, so there was uh, one of the first clips. Um, you know, time for a different voice, and he knew that. And, you know, as he spoke more, uh, it was quite clear that I think he's maybe thought of that for a little while. And from what he alluded to, maybe they thought that that time was in the summer. Um, but it was obvious that, you know, with the excitement of the moves in the offseason, um, they really did think that, you know, the pieces were in place to go forward and Paul Maurice could get the job done. And um, it became quite clear to him and I think a lot of other people around uh, and unfortunately, it's a strange thing. And I have, you know, obviously have not played professional hockey. It's hard to describe this or explain it. But the fact of just needing that new voice. And Remus, you sort of mentioned with Bruce Boudreaux. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, that team stunk. They were terrible. They were at the bottom of the Western Conference standings. And now all they do is win hockey game after hockey game with a new voice and a new coach behind the bench. That was a significant change. And they did clear out the entire coaching staff and bring in an entirely new individual this is quite different. We're essentially just moving the top dog and moving in one of the assistants to take over. Um, but it still is as significant a move as we've seen here in Winnipeg since Claude Noel was fired just about eight years ago with the Winnipeg Jets. Let's hear a little bit more from Maurice. Um, you know, he did talk, uh, continued to talk about it, maybe just expanded on more about what he had just said and needing a new voice in the locker room change to be delivered a different way it's what happens to us right the, the only guy who's been with a team longer than me is john cooper and he's one two and you need to you, you need to after eight nine years get the team to that place or the, or you need to do what i did take him from what i think is a bottom 10 situation and move him to a top 10 situation and be proud of that and i am i truly am this is this is me having a very unique position to view all things and to understand with my experience what I'm seeing. They're trying, they're doing what I ask them to do. They need to get to a different level and they're capable of it. This team is capable of it. And it's gonna be capable. Well, Lord knows I would've done it three years ago, right? It, 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 it becomes from you push, I, I guess I would suggest maybe it's, it's the law of diminishing returns. You push the button the first time, you get a huge kick for it. Eight years later, and you can buy a whole bunch of different buttons. They need a different voice. All right, so there's Paul Maurice, who resigned this morning as head coach of the Winnipeg Jets. And you know, I think that line at the end says it all. Um, the law of diminishing returns. And it's not a theory. It's not a hypothesis. It is a law. And I think we've seen that with this hockey club and the Winnipeg Jets. And you know, people that care about this team... Fans of this team, supporters of this team will hope that maybe this can be the catalyst to get the most out of this club. Because Remus, as we've talked all along, I mean, there were some built-in excuses for this team over the last couple seasons. Um, you know, the player turnover, Dustin Bufflin leaving, the challenges on the blue line. Most of those excuses, if you want to call them, uh, that left the building this summer. Um, and there wasn't any more. And this was the year to get it done. And um you know what? They had a really tough start to the season. Maurice touched on that. Um, and then put together a real nice stretch of games. And it is still, I have to admit, and I'm interested to hear people's thoughts in the chat on this. Um, he was asked about those two Edmonton games earlier this year. And after the game, and I think they ended up losing in the shootout, but they got three or four points. He was absolutely buzzing. And it was like, okay, we have got it. This is the team. This is the way that we need to play. And um, I think it was a very exciting moment for him as well as the organization and certainly this is with the fans. And since then, things just haven't been right. And we've seen very uneven performances. 
some very underwhelming performances and some ugly losses on a home ice to teams that the Winnipeg Jets have no business losing to. And I think that, you know, started some long discussions within the organization, uh, as well as maybe some long looks in the mirror for Paul Maurice. And I, I got so much respect for him as a man and what he had to say today. The honesty that I think he um, pretty much always dealt with uh, with the media and as the conduit to the fans. And we've certainly been better off for having him uh, here. But I also do agree that with what he said, that, you know, something needed to change. And, um, you know, if the head coach feels that this team needs a new voice, um, who would know better than uh, than he himself? So, um, well, we're going to talk much more about what Maurice had to say with a number of guests. But I think it's also important right now, before we get to Mike McIntyre, to hear what Kevin Sheveldayoff had to say. Because... There are expectations about this team that he built. And a lot of it is on the shoulders of the players. I'll be fascinated to see how this team looks tonight and how they come out after, you know, everything that we've learned today. Um, but Shevel Dayoff um, said, first things first. I mean, this is about getting this team to the next level. A lot of the conversations that Paul and I have had over the you know last uh, weeks, um, you know, months, what weeks really is, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, getting it to that next level and, and uh, you know, uh, what, uh, what, what it's going to take and, and can we get there. And, and um, you know, you're limited, um, you know, in a lot of things that you can do in this game. And, and um, you know, so, uh, again, as we continue to talk, I think that, uh, um, you know, in his mind, you know, he felt that, um, you know, he certainly wasn't uh, going to be able to, um, you know, to, to, to get us, you know, to that next, uh, that next level. Um, we'll have a little bit more of Shevel Day off coming up, but, um, you know, that was, you know, some, probably some tough conversations, um, you know, between some people that really care about each other and have some really, really strong relationships and friendships. And I don't think that is going to change. Um, but you know what? I mean, maybe this is the best way for this to happen. I mean, it certainly maintains the dignity. And I, I was really there for the pride that Maurice had in the job that he did here and the, um, and, and you know, and what he was able to accomplish. I mean, I know a lot of people have been all over him and, you know, rightly so. I mean, it was frustrating. There were some really poor performances by a team that probably is capable of a lot more. We've seen a lot more from them. And when you don't have those answers, um, you know, it does beg the question as to, you know, is the right thing to go forward doing the same thing over and over again? And I think everyone sort of realized that that wasn't the case. Um, but there is pressure on this team and this organization. And now it's going to be Dave Lowry's job to see if he can get more out of the Winnipeg Jets team that Paul Maurice was, as uh, he obviously suggested and, and admitted that it sounds like it was time and this team needed a new voice. Now, from an organizational perspective and the general manager, um, there's a lot that goes into this. And I'm not going to say that I think they were all on the same page. I certainly don't think that they were going to fire Paul Maurice if he didn't resign. But I think that, you know, we got a bit of a window from both what the coach said and the general manager said that um, they all realized that this was a possibility. I'm sure they didn't want it to go down this road, but it became apparent that some sort of a change was needed and, and we got it today. Uh, but Sheffield Day expanded a little bit more on the change that took place this morning with the announcement of the resignation of Paul Maurice. As and certainly in these last couple of days here with with our conversations that, you know, I, I think he, he definitely felt that he couldn't push the buttons and, and, and we came to an agreement. Was there a night, Kevin, when you felt like the, the, the club was like there was there a point where you just felt we're just not under we're, we're no, underperforming? So like, even in the, 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 the real disappointing losses, like I thought we worked. You know, like, and a lot of times, you you know, you hear the the terms, and you know, we talk to you guys, and and say, well, you know, he lost the room and stuff like that. Like, I, I really didn't think, you know, that the guys ever stopped working. Um, you know, did they? And I don't think they stopped listening. Did they stop hearing? You know, I think, and that's you know, that, then it's semantics, but I think there is a different thing because there's, there's, there's a lot of guys in that room that you know certainly um, it's going to be an adjustment for them. But 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 I think that that adjustment is going to be good. I met with the team after Paul did and talked with them, and and this is a good group. Like they they like each other, they care for each other in that room, um, and I think they're a good hockey team. And um, you know, I said like I I don't like waking up in the morning looking at NHL.com and seeing where we're at and I said I don't think you guys do either but there's truly only you know there's only the group assembled right there in front of me when I was speaking and as I said to them you guys are the only ones that can do this 
I said, you know, the coach and that, yeah, that that's fine. But you guys play the game. You have to hold yourselves accountable. You have to make sure that, you know, uh, we're not sitting here at the end of the year and year end ex- ex- exit meetings saying, oh, man, this could have been, this could have been, you know, or should have been. So, you know, again, a, a new voice uh, and I think a good voice. I think I'm really excited actually for uh, for Dave Lowry. I've seen Dave, uh, you know, operate here now for for a couple of years. Um, but this is an experienced uh, uh, hockey man. Like he's he's played over a thousand games. He's coached uh, at a lot of different levels. He's been assistant coach under many different um, you know coaches. Um, he's uh, you know he's a guy that um, you know obviously has learned some things you know at, at the feet of Paul Maurice. But when I talked to him. Um, you know, late last night about this opportunity, you could see the gears and the wheels turning right away. And, and even in my subsequent conversations, like, you know, he's he's got some different things he wants to do, like, you know, just just even in the meeting side of things and all the, the different things. So he's, you know, he, he's certainly, um, you know, taken uh, taken that next step. And, and um, I'm, I'm excited for him. And I think that, that the guys, uh, you know, are, are excited for him, too. All right. So there was Kevin Day off kind of expanding on the need for uh, you know, on the change today um, and what this means. And I think he put it very, very well. This is on the team. Um, and I appreciate the fact that he told us a little bit about, you know, his conversation to the club, um, because certainly coaching is a part of it. But they're the guys that go out on the ice that, you know, get paid a lot of money uh, to perform. And, uh, and, and, you know, it hadn't been happening well enough and consistently enough um, well, to keep going the way things have been going. So it's, this is going to be fascinating, um, you know, for observers of this team and certainly for fans that I think are optimistic that there is a lot of talent in that room. But it's hard to, you know, listen to what Kevin Sheveldayoff just had to say there and not realize that the expectations now are squarely on the shoulders of the players. This coaching change has been made. You can't sit around saying, oh, this is a Stanley Cup team, but they're being held back by the coach anymore. Um, and certainly, I mean, for fans and myself included, I mean, like, we'd love to see this team, you know, look a little different than they had uh, have been lately. Um, you know, maybe mix a few other players into the lineup, maybe use some players differently. But the bottom line is get the most out of a roster that ownership has invested to the salary cap in and justifiably came into this season with some major, major expectations. We're going to talk about it all coming up in just a second with Mike McIntyre. Um, the chat right now is absolutely on fire. Welcome to everybody, especially all the new folks. If you just popped in, we're here every day, 1 p.m., Monday to Friday on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Hit that red subscribe button and join us on a daily basis, focusing mainly on the Winnipeg Jets. The Bombers starting off with Winnipeg News. I did see waiters and some other people saying this must be killing us not to be talking about that Chiefs game last night. Yeah, you're kind of right, but um, let's face it, it's Winnipeg first on this show. Or as Brandon Alexander said earlier on this week, it's Winnipeg or nothing. So um, and we'll have plenty of time to talk about the NFL a little later on today. It's all about this coaching change and the big news for the Winnipeg Jets. Listen, while we get Mike ready, uh, I do want to thank our friends over at F Apparel for joining us as a sponsor of Winnipeg Sports Talk. I mean, many of you have seen some of the amazing custom suits uh, on Winnipeg Jets, on members of the media, on Willie Jefferson, flashing that cool, what did he have, the X-Men insert on the inside of his suit. Um, They do custom suits for men. It's a Winnipeg-owned business. They actually do a full line of custom clothing for men, including dress shirts, winter jokes, uh, winter jackets, casual chinos, golf pants, and more. Uh, bottom line is every guy needs at least one suit that fits and looks great. And I think coming into 2022, despite all the craziness with COVID happening right now, we should have many more opportunities to uh, to put those suits on and get out in the community. Um, right now, if you think that that might be a great Christmas present, gift cards are 15% off online up until Christmas. So a $200 gift card will only cost you $170 great spot to do it you can check out everything f apparel has going on and get those online gift card discounts at ephfapparel.com or go visit them at 190 smith street downtown uh, getting ready for christmas our friends at vita health fresh market not only have some great gift ideas uh but they've also got some amazing things for baking at the holidays um fresh local free roaming turkeys from vita health are available order in store Deadline is December 19th at 386 a pound and uh, a ton of cool organic plant-based gluten-free and natural holiday fixings too, including stuffing, cranberry sauce, baking supplies, eggnog, chocolate, and more. 
seven Winnipeg locations, including the newest store in Linden Ridge. You can check out everything Vita Health has going on over at myvita.ca. 85 years of empowering people to lead healthy lives here in Manitoba. And uh, our friends at Culligan Water are ready for the holidays as well. Those water softeners sure go a long ways to uh, making uh, you know your tubs and dishes sparkle. Uh, but of course, water is the key to great living. We were just talking about getting healthy with Vita Health. Well, it all starts with uh, a great supply of Culligan Water. Um, they've got it all, though. Uh, check them out at 1200 Sargent Avenue. DrinkCulligan.com online, water softeners, filters, bottled water coolers, drinking water systems, citywide delivery services, as well as commercial and industrial water products and solutions as well. December special, the gift of Culligan water, or give it to yourself, $9.99 a month for the first three months, 694-5180, or give them a call, uh, or pop by and see them at 1200, Sergeant. DrinkCulligan.com online. Um, so Remo, we're going to get to, uh, we're going to get to Mike McIntyre. He's going to join us in a few minutes. We'll also chop this up with Brandon Rewicki and Ken Weave a little later on. Um, but as I was sort of mentioning, we got out of Kevin Shevel day off's piece. Um, you know, this does really take away. We said a lot of the excuses have been taken away from a management perspective going into this season. Well, now with this coaching change, I think it's squarely on the players in that locker room to, uh, to figure it out. And, you know, maybe they were still listening, but they weren't hearing certainly time for um you know for this group to step up and i think we're going to find out uh, the, the answer tonight from this hockey club in this game with the with the very sudden change and we heard it from the players we'll hear them more um is going to be very very interesting to see how this plays out funny i joked the other day that um you know i thought the jets were for sure going to win um after the buffalo win because it seems like you know they have these games where they don't play up to your expectations and then they find a way to you know come back and play like you think they can. And you know, I didn't expect to have a coaching change, but maybe they can be, you know, with a new voice, as Paul Murray said, they can play to what we think they, the level we think they can get up to for a more consistent uh, period of time. I am curious again, we'll have to keep an eye on player usage tonight. And if there's changes to special teams as well, because special teams has been a problem all of this season, but I think even the, on the penalty kill dating back the last couple of years. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, um, I know uh, I was really excited to have Bob Irving on. Uh, I know a lot of people were excited to have Bob on. Um, with everything happening today and the entire focus of the entire sports scene in Winnipeg being on Maurice's um, departure, um, we're going to get on Bob on Monday or Tuesday of next week. So make sure to join us. That'll be our Christmas gift to you, the great Bob Irving coming on to begin next week. But I didn't want such a special visit from Bob to sort of be uh, overshadowed by everything that was obviously going to be dominating everything today. Um, so there you have it. That's the latest on that. We really appreciate Bob agreeing to join us uh, early next week. All right, let's welcome in Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press, who's been kind enough to give us a few minutes today on a wild day. Mike, uh, thanks for doing this, first of all. How stunned were you when uh, you got the news this morning? I think stunned more by the timing of it, Huss. I mean, I, I had a sense, certainly, that if if the Jets continued to flounder here, um, that change was probably coming. I know a lot of people maybe thought that True North would never move on from Paul Maurice. They figured, you know, like a senator, he had a lifetime job, but I, I never subscribed to that. I mean, I think every coach, um, and Paul Maurice talked about that today, Every everyone has a shelf life. And I think we've, we've wondered out loud a little more uh, recently how close to that shelf life, that expiration date we were getting with Paul Maurice. But I think the timing of it really stuns me more than anything. I mean, I wouldn't have been shocked, I suppose, if we heard about a change on Wednesday after the Sabres game when nothing happened the next day and Paul Maurice was out there for what was a pretty gloomy, doomy practice. Uh, I can tell you, Huss, I've seen hundreds of Jets practices over the years and pretty much all of them this season. That was the the most somber, quiet, almost funeral-like practice on Wednesday. Now, yesterday's practice, a little more upbeat, a little more energy, but Paul Maurice didn't seem himself to me over the last few days, just in our dealings with him. And clearly, you know, we heard today this has been weighing on him and a decision he's probably been wrestling with for a while but I, I want to make one thing clear here 
Paul Maurice, I don't believe Paul Maurice just flat out resigned. This was a mutual decision. Uh, and Kevin Chevaldeoff, I, I pushed him on this a little bit in, in his availability this morning or this afternoon. You know, was this a case where either you resign or you're going to be fired? And and Kevin Chevaldeoff didn't dismiss the suggestion that he was basically going to fire Paul Maurice if he didn't resign. Like, I think this is the this is the way they they decided to phrase it. But I truly believe that this was kind of a forced resignation, but a mutually agreed upon one that Paul Maurice probably has seen the writing on the wall for a bit. And kind of the recent play of the team only confirmed something that he's kind of been been thinking about for a while. And so, yeah, day of a game, uh, a week before Christmas, probably not the best timing for sure. Um, but it is what it is. And, and I think, you know, it, it was probably in the end a, a necessary decision by all parties uh, to move on. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, the thing that was stunning certainly was the timing. I mean, we're getting up, you know, we've been talking about this for the last couple of days. You get into a big weekend with the Capitals coming to town tonight and then a massive game against the St. Louis Blues on Sunday afternoon. Um, you don't think you're going to be talking about the most significant management change with this team in the last eight years. Um, right. But yet here we are. You know, Maurice, and I can't I can't remember who the media member was that asked him um, about kind of how did we get to this point? Um, and they pointed to those Edmonton games. And, and of course, those two Edmonton games were right after the the switch of Svechnikov and Wheeler that was such a hot button topic. And, you know, on this show and around the fan base. And I remember looking back to those games and saying, I mean, that is the blueprint. I mean, you're going at it. Edmonton at the time was the first place team in the Western uh, you know, Conference. I thought they got a ton out of Mark Shifley. We've talked a lot about yeah. his two-way game. I thought it was as good as it's been maybe since the playoffs in those games. And you thought, wow, this team is capable of so much. And then since then, it has been, you know, frankly, in a funk with a few ups and downs along the way. What do you think happened, Mike? Um, you know, I, I guess we always hear this. Well, it was time for a new voice, but I mean, we have even this season. They were nine three and three at one point. They were in first place in the division. What do you make of just kind of what's happened over the past month and how it led to uh, this morning? Yeah, I mean, certainly we can look at the fact that Paul Maurice, even though they were nine three and three and nine three and four after that that really exciting shootout loss in Edmonton. And the Jets were on top of the Central Division, right? I mean, they look like a heavyweight and like they were going to reach their full potential. Paul Maurice, though, was seeing some things or he thought he saw things in his team that he felt the need to change some lines around, move some players around. Of course, it also coincided with the captain uh, coming back. Um, you know, around that time, he had been out with COVID and Mark Shifley was coming back as well after missing some games and clearly... You know, Paul Maurice was trying to find a spot for his two big horses, the guys that, you know, he's kind of been in the trenches with. And it, it, it's clear now, looking back, that there was some disruption to whatever the team was building at that time, that that chemistry that they had, uh, they, they weren't able to sustain it. And it is puzzling for sure. I mean, to some degree, you could look at the schedule and say it got tougher that maybe the Jets were the beneficiary earlier in the year of some easier scheduling and it kind of caught up to them. Um, whatever the case is, the Jets could not bottle, you know, what they had going after that run where I think they, they went like 14 games where they only had one regulation loss, right? Well, now they've got four wins in their last 12. They're going the complete wrong way. Um, and, you know, they, they're three points out of a playoff spot as they woke up this morning, there's still basically two thirds of the season left. Um, so I think they still see this group, uh, Kevin Chevaldeoff, I imagine Mark Chipman, they see this as a group that should be better than it is. They, they shouldn't just be fighting to be a playoff team. They should be among the, the best teams in the conference. And clearly there's something ailing this group. And Paul Maurice, you know, talked today about his message, perhaps, not getting through the way it was that the players aren't motivated maybe to play for him like they have been in the past. And so the fresh voice comes in and we did, we've seen in Vancouver what a fresh voice can do, right? They <laughs> didn't change the players in Vancouver. They, they changed the coach and they've won six in a row. 
are the Jets, you know, can this group go on a similar run? I don't know. Uh, one one difference between what they've done in Vancouver, they're not bringing in a voice from outside the organization. The new voice is a guy who already had a say to some degree in Dave Lowry. And then you have the added element of him being the father of, of Adam Lowry. It's, it's a bit of a unique situation. Um so, you know, I don't see this as the Jets pulling the plug on this season. Um, certainly, it's starting to swirl the drain a little bit here, but I think they still see that there's something salvageable. And I think, Haas, to your point, they've seen enough already this year to suggest they have they have it within this group to do some really good things. Paul Maurice, for whatever reason, was not able to get that out of them consistently and certainly not consistently enough. So now it falls on somebody else, Dave Lowry in this case, to see if he can get that out of them on a more consistent basis. Yeah, well, let's talk about Lowry for a minute. And again, you know, we're having this conversation before Lowry's first media availability, which will be later on this afternoon before tonight's 7 p.m. puck drop. Um, But you make a great point. This wasn't cleaning house and moving out an entire coaching staff and bringing in a guy with a ton of NHL experience like Bruce Boudreau. This is Paul Maurice leaving the organization stepping aside, Jamie Compon coming back in, which is yeah. noteworthy, and that came out this morning, but having Dave Lowry take over as the head coach. Um, all the conversations about changing the coach that, you know, have been sort of a familiar refrain by frustrated fans are out the window. Yeah. Um, we're not going to be talking about Dave, well, we'll be talking about Dave Lowry, and we'll be talking to Dave Lowry, but, I mean, to me, and we just heard from Cheval Day out before we brought you on, to me, this totally puts the onus of this season squarely on the shoulders of the players in that room. Well, it sure does. And, you know, I wrote when training camp got underway that there should be more pressure on the players because, you know, the previous excuses that, oh, our back end, you know, we lost Buffalo and Enstrom, like we won't repeat all that, but they went and addressed that. They got Nate Schmidt, they got Brendan Dillon, you know, they re-signed Neil Pionk, like they supposedly had the pieces. And so that put more pressure on the players. And I wrote at the time, it should also put more pressure on Paul Maurice. Not to say Kevin Chevalayoff could just put his feet up, but, you know, the GM kind of did what you'd want the GM to do in terms of the, the roster assembled. So you, we know you can't change all 18 players. And so when they're not performing up to snuff, the spotlight moves to the coach. And, you know, to Paul Maurice's credit, he's kind of falling on the sword a little bit here, right? Um, And, you know, I thought he said all the right things today for sure. Um, It's clear that he still has tremendous respect from his players, from the organization. Like, there's no bridges being burned here. Um, But they he recognized, the organization recognized that that they have to try and uh, try something else. And... You know, so now the onus is absolutely on the players. It's not on the coach anymore. Um, and if the players continue to scuffle here, well, to me, the next step mm-hmm. then is you got to change the mix of the players. And that's where things like trades and, you know, I'm not saying this team is going to start tearing it all down and go into full rebuild, but they certainly would probably start looking at changing the chemistry within the room and and on the ice. And that's where some potential trades would would factor in um you know just Huss, just back to your point a minute ago and we, we talked about the timing being surprising don't underestimate the return of jamie compon in all this I, I believe that's a big factor here um and i don't know the whole backstory of when they knew jamie compon would be rejoining the team today if that's a very re- i imagine that's a fairly recent decision as as folks probably know jamie's been back in california his wife tina's battling uh, breast cancer. He was with the Jets on that first road trip only because the Jets were kind of in the compound's backyard. And Jamie, who's a very respected veteran guy, he's been missed, no doubt. And I I suspect Paul Maurice has missed his right-hand man dearly. The fact that he's now back as of today, maybe um, accelerated or, or opened the door for this move to happen. I do wonder if Jamie Compon isn't back today, do they just go with the status quo for a bit longer here because they were already one short behind the bench. And, you know, if Maurice was out now, you're two guys short. So I think there's, 
there's some at least assurance that they have, you know, uh, some extra experience kind of coming back into that room and behind the bench. And maybe that assisted in the timing here as well. Mike McIntyre, the Winnipeg Free Press with us. Uh, Mike, I know you got to run. I got one more for you. And I really do appreciate you taking the time for us on such a very busy day. Um, I, I've been thinking, and I think I maybe mentioned this to you in a, a chat over the last couple of weeks that, you know, I really wondered what Kevin Sheveldayoff was thinking watching this team and the ups and downs over the last month, because I certainly think that, you know, the moves that he made, they really had a belief that they yeah. had a team that, you know, should not be scuffling around the playoff line, but should be challenging Minnesota and Colorado to be a top team in the central division. Now that this change has been made, from a general manager in the organization's perspective, what do you think Shevel Dayoff is hoping to see out of the new coach? Um, and who will that affect the most in the Jet lineup? Yeah, it's it's a great question. I mean, first of all, Adam Lowry is not going to become the number one center on this team. Um, you know, nor do I expect his minutes to change significantly or his role to change significantly. Um, you know, it's hard to say, and we'll maybe get a bit better picture when when Dave Lowry speaks at four. I also, I wouldn't expect to see his fingerprints all over this roster tonight just because of how quick this came about, right? Like, I'm guessing that they're going to roll the lines that Paul Maurice put together at practice yesterday. And, you know, that if there's going to be changes, you probably have to give him a few weeks to kind of settle in here, and it would probably be more noticeable you know, as we get early into the 2022 calendar. Um, that being said, uh, you know, the big question I think that a lot of fans have is, could this open the door for some younger guys, whether it's Vili Hainala, Cole Perfetti? We know David Gustafson is up, and he's obviously going to play tonight, make his regular season debut, you know, this season tonight. And that was happening under Paul Maurice. But there's a lot of people saying, well, geez, what took so long? It, will Dave Lowry fundamentally change that? Will he throw the door wide open and and maybe move some of those guys up into roles that they hadn't previously had? Will he play the fourth line more? You know, the things that we've talked about with that are sort of Paul Maurice staples, right? That he leans on some of, you know, the Wheelers and the Shifleys too much. Well, he can't lean on Blake Wheeler. Dave Lowry won't be able to lean on Blake Wheeler for a couple months anyways because the captain is out. So, you know, it may take a while to get a full sense of how Dave Lowry's views are different than Paul Maurice's. And then there's the added sort of factor here, Huss, that Dave Lowry's the interim coach, um, you know, and and we don't know, I guess, you know, what that means going forward. Kevin Chevalayoff said, sure, he'd be considered in the offseason, but they will obviously do a much broader uh, search for a new a new voice behind the bench. So, a lot of intrigue, a lot of mystery for sure. I don't think we're going to get all our questions answered right away here. Certainly not tonight. But I am fascinated to see how this Jets team comes out tonight. Um, you know, I think it was, it might have been Adam Lowry who said that this can kind of go one of two ways. And I would wholeheartedly agree. Either the Jets come out and they look like that group that I saw at practice on Wednesday. And if that's, if they come out hanging their heads, they are going to get run out of their own building tonight, Huss. Uh, or it could light the proverbial fire under them and they could come out guns a-blazing and, you know, really open our eyes. I guess I would say no matter which Jets team we see tonight, I would probably not take too much away from it. I think this is one of those situations where time will ultimately tell the tale. What do you be writing about tomorrow in the free press, Mike? <laughs> yeah, slow news day around here for sure. Uh, luckily, uh, we got my, my colleague Jay Bell and I, we're tag team in this. So I'm going to have a column. I mean, I, I'm taking the approach, Huss, that I'm going to play off sort of what Paul Maurice said, that he called this a good day for the Winnipeg Jets. I don't, I don't think it's a good day for the Winnipeg Jets. I do, however, think it was probably a necessary day for the Winnipeg Jets. And I'll kind of hash that viewpoint out in my column tomorrow about why I think Paul Maurice was really good for this city, for this organization, but it was time for a new voice. And, and so, you know, there's that bit of a, uh, you know, conflict, I guess, there in, in, in how we're all reacting to this. But regardless, um, you know, Paul Maurice is going to be missed for a lot of reasons. And certainly us in the media, uh, we were spoiled by a guy who, uh, 
you know, could could spin a tail and and give you a sound bite like really nobody else in the game. Yeah, and a gif on the internet too. Uh, Mike, yes. <laughs> uh, hey, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to reading uh, all the coverage from you and the team in the free press tomorrow. Appreciate it as always. And uh, you're, I'm with you. Fascinating to see what we get out of this hockey club tonight. Indeed. Enjoy the rest of the day. Take care. Thanks, pal. At Mike McIntyre, WPG. That, of course, is Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Free Press. Um, Root Town's going to join us in just a minute. Brandon Rewicki, looking forward to that um, as we do it. I, I popped by to see the gang at Manitoba Battery yesterday. What a great crew they've got down there. And they are busy. And I was speaking with uh, with uh, one of the guys at the front, and he said, oh, it's great. We've had a bunch of people come in from uh, from Winnipeg Sports Talk, so I appreciate everyone supporting our sponsors. But he also told me how, you know, every time it gets to be minus 20, that's when they have to go start charging and, you know, replacing batteries, which is the worst time to possibly do it because, of course, you're outside and your car isn't going. They do free battery testing there. Um, if you think you might need one or would like to make sure before it gets to be minus 30, Pop down and see him at 1026 Logan. Probably nice and warm. They'll check it out. And if you need it, you'll get the best price on a new battery in town. And of course, you can see on the screen right now, a great Christmas gift for, um, you know, if, if something you need it. Uh, 25 feet booster cables, just $60 right now. And batteries for literally everything. Um, we've got the holiday season uh the christmas shopping is done how about getting your gift a, a loved one a gift that'll going to keep you safe and running throughout the winter that is a great spot they've got batteries for everything but pop down and see them find out more online at manitobabattery.com give them donnie and the gang a call 783-8787 or pop down and see them at 1026 logan avenue uh i talked to the guys at royal today the shipments are in. All of the bomber gear is out and ready to go. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the uh, the little lap through Royal. Man, there's some great stuff for the holidays. All the Olympic jerseys coming up. Hopefully, we can wear those. And, of course, you've got the championship hats, the championship T-shirts, hoodies, and more <laughs> celebrating the bombers back-to-back -back win. And uh, this is a great idea as well. If you've never been to Royal before, you've got a bit of an idea just how incredible that store is. Um, so you can take care of all your holiday shopping and get all of your Bomber Championship gear right now with a trip down to Royal Sports at 750 Pemina Highway. Check them out on Instagram as well, at Royal Sports Pemina, um, for uh, the latest deals, holiday gift ideas, and more. Uh, but right now, a lot of blue and gold and a lot of back-to-back -back on uh, on that feed. And of course, our friends over at Not Auto Corp can't thank Trevor and the gang enough for their great support of us since day one of Winnipeg Sports Talk. If you're thinking about a new vehicle heading into the new year, why not get into the car of your dreams at a great price with the help of the Not team? Pop down and see them at Waverly and McGilvery. Check out the new Winnipeg Car Lab. Maybe get like a detailing gift certificate or something for a loved one if you're not in the market for a new ride. Um, they've all got it there. And of course, if you do have uh, need a wrap, tinting, rims, that's all happening over at uh, the lab. Why not get into the lab as well? Not.ca, Waverlyn McGilvery. Big thanks to our friends at Not Auto Corp. All right, continuing our conversations on the resignation of Paul Maurice and where the Winnipeg Jets go from here, we bring in our good friend, Brandon Rowicki, longtime voice of the big show on our former station that will not be named. Uh, Brandon, <laughs> what, uh, first of all, great to talk to you, man, and best of the season to you. Uh, were you caught off guard when uh, you got the alerts this morning about a uh, shakeup downtown? Uh, was I caught off guard? I mean, it was just nice that uh, the podcast episode that I dropped Friday morning was relevant for all of 20 minutes, so <laughs> timing-wise, couldn't have been better. Yeah, the new episode of Skates and Plates coming up soon. A, a redo, yeah. <laughs> if you will. I should have mentioned, of course, Brandon, if you're not already following, many of you are Skates and Plates, uh, tons of Winnipeg Jet stuff, tons of food talk as well, which I certainly love. Um, but yeah, I'm sure, man, you're cranking things out, getting ready for a huge weekend for the Winnipeg Jets, and then this bombshell drops up. Like I'm with you, and I think I sort of echo what Mike said. I mean, I think all of us thought that there if things continued the way they were going, there would be some sort of change. Often the first change involves a head coach, although many people thought that wouldn't happen here in Winnipeg because of Maurice's tenure, his relationship with the organization, his experience. But for it to drop on a game day going into this big weekend with Washington here tonight, 
Um, that totally caught me off guard. Although, um, you know, if you realize that a decision like that has to be made, the sooner the better, I guess. But it was maybe surprising this didn't at least happen yesterday, for instance. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I thought that there was a decent chance Paul Maurice would be, I guess, you know, quote unquote, given the weekend. Uh, just because uh, <laughs> you would think that after a loss to Buffalo, the time to do it would have been Wednesday morning, perhaps. But I mean, who knows what's going on behind the scenes? Um, I, I just thought that the Jets, given their, I mean, long track record of of loyalty and patience, would have waited just a little bit longer to see if they could get out of the tailspin that they're in right now. But obviously, they felt that a, a change was needed, and it, you know, I I don't know how you can argue against that, to be honest. Uh, you know, the all- funny thing is, Brandon, that. You know, Maurice was sort of asked about that, and he said, well, that actually happened earlier this year. You know, we won a couple games. I'm not sure whether they were talking about the Arizona game going into the weekend where they played New Jersey and Toronto and got those two wins, but it was pretty clear that this didn't just happen overnight. This wasn't just because of a very disappointing home loss to the Buffalo Sabres. It was more the body of work over the past month that followed a 9-3-3 three, and three start and some of the best hockey we've seen this team play, especially in that back-to-back home-and-home uh, home against the Oilers. Yeah, and I guess when you look at the the totality of it and and what I, you know, kind of looked at just talking about, you know, the Maurice hot seat, you know, I, I'm sure you've mentioned Shafley one or two times as well over the past couple of days. You think? But <laughs> there's to me, there's really been, I, I kind of boiled it down to three major issues that have surrounded Paul Maurice during the past couple of seasons at the very least, things that have popped up time and time again. And and for me, that was the team's penalty kill, the defensive zone play, and then, you know, lumping everything into personnel, you know, line combinations, time on ice, discipline, things like that. And for the previous two seasons, Paul Maurice could lean on the crutch of, you know what, the defense I have in front of me isn't good enough to contend at the NHL level. And, And I think a lot of people might have agreed with that. But that excuse was taken away with the additions of Dylan and Schmidt this past offseason. And, and so when those three criticisms continued to plague the team week after week, and there really was nothing to fall back on, you couldn't point to a lack of talent anymore. And at that point, you have to look at, you know, the man behind the bench and, and, and the voice that's leading everything. And if you didn't think it was going to be turned around right away, then it really was a, an easy decision by the organization, whether it was, you know, Paul Maurice or, or management, you know, giving him an out, however it went. You know, it, it, it just seemed like now was the time for change. And we'll see how much it can change because these next four are pretty heavyweight matchups. And, you know, going one and three in the stretch here, that, that might be enough to sink the season. Like there needs to be kind of an immediate jolt of energy given to the team here. And there's, you know, there's a few major issues that need to be rectified. And I don't know how that gets done in the span of, you know, 24 or 48 hours. Well, 24, 48 hours. Never mind. How about six? (laughs) Because, I mean, literally, we got a press conference at 10 a.m. today. Dave Lowry speaking for the first time as head coach at 4 p.m. Then they're dropping the puck against Alex Ovechkin and a pretty damn good Washington Capitals team coming in. Um, but you're right. I mean, I really think that the timing of this decision, if anything, as surprising as it was, considering there might have been some time earlier in this week to do it, I think speaks to the urgency of the situation for the Winnipeg Jets um, with what's happened as of late. And to your point, I mean, a major meat grinder of competition coming up and no like the room for error that you have when you're nine and three is one thing. You're losing games to Arizona. You're losing games to Buffalo. You're literally burning points that you know other teams are going to be getting. You have to make those up the other way. And, uh, you know, we came today. What did you make of the pressers this morning? Uh, the one thing I'll say, I mean, I thought Maurice was all class. I mean, you know, it was a uh, it was a, a fitting way for him to go out, holding his head high, saying he was proud of what he's done with the Winnipeg Jets, but believes that this is the right thing to do. And from the general manager side of things, I found the Shevel Dayoff presser fascinating in that, I think it was quite clear that, you know, to your point, I think this was uh, somewhat of a mutual decision. I mean, I don't think Paul Maurice was saying anything that was being disagreed with by the general manager and presumably the chairman. I think they're all watching this team. They're all very tuned into what's going on. I think they were all in that that was happening. But the other thing was that, it, I mean, especially with bringing Dave Lowry over as an interim head coach, um, guys, it's on you now. Figure it out. Um, you know what? You're not listening to Paul Maurice. Well, here's a new guy. But beyond that, 
the pressure squarely on the shoulders of the players of the Winnipeg Jets dressing room. Yeah, I mean, urgency was the thing that stood out to me. Yeah, and and I don't know, I don't know if or if at all Kevin Chevalier is facing any heat right now to to get this record turned around. But we all know the situation with the team and the contracts. It's at max a three year window right now before major major changes are are on the horizon. And and so the the assumption was going into the year that the team would be basically where the St. Louis Blues are right now, right? Like somewhere may, maybe behind Colorado, but. In the second, third, you know, comfortable playoff position, I, I think that's what the expectation was. And now that you're already, you know, three, four, maybe even five points back of the playoff line before you get to the holiday break, like things are are really scary right now. And it's time to, I think, up the urgency level. And, and this is obviously the move to get it done here. So I, 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 again, completely understand. I talked about it yesterday that this was something that I expected to happen you know, at, at some point in the next, you know, four games here, the timing is very interesting. Um, but now what intrigues me the most is just the the immediate changes that come from this. Because What's you that? have somebody that's not from outside the organization coming in. You have somebody that was a part of Paul Maurice's coaching staff. And how radical are some of these changes going to be as soon as the game tonight in Washington? Well, I, I mean, let's just talk about what do you expect to see tonight? I mean, I thought Mike did a good job of laying it out. And I mean, I can't really tell you one way or the other. I mean, I don't know. And I think everyone going to that, that arena tonight is going to be very interested to see how this team comes out because I'm sort of with Mike. It could be one of two things. You certainly hope you'll see a team that comes out like they've got a firecracker shoved up their ass ready to blow up. Um, but I mean, man, listening to the players this morning, we'll have some of those clips afterwards. Um, it was somewhat somber, as often happens after coaching changes are made. Um, and the fact that this kind of was the shock, the jolt this morning, and they're going right into a game tonight. I mean, I really don't know, but I, I think that, you know, a, a, a very interesting test right off the bat is going to be, what does this team look like? What do all these guys look like in their first shifts? I mean, is it going to be another slow start, take a little while to get things going? Um, because if that's the case, I don't know where they build from within with a, a brand new voice, if you will, on the bench. Yeah, I mean, unless you're hiring Bruce Boudreaux, it, it takes time, right? <laughs> like it's not, it's not. Oh, a new guy's behind there. Now we can, you know, give a hundred percent, and away we go when we're back in the playoff spot. It, it, it might take some time for the team, and they don't really have any of that. And I don't know what to expect as far as changes go. I do know what I would like to see, and, and it's really two major things for me. And it's very ironic because the first one is just making sure that there's some aggressiveness on the penalty kill and you get maybe the biggest test of all with the greatest power play weapon that's ever existed in the history of the sport and Alex Ovechkin coming to town. So I'll be very intrigued again, you know, no practice time really under a new coach, but are there any changes to how the team kills penalties or is it more of the same? That's probably, you know, the the most tangible thing that I'll be looking for tonight. But the big thing as far as, you know, personnel for me and, and what, I'm hoping, and I think a lot of Jets fans are hoping to see changed, is a a transformation of Mark Shifley into a two-way player. And I, I I don't know why we've seen the devolution of his defensive game over these past several seasons. I don't know what the reason is, because I think he's capable of doing it, but it's it's just hurt this team so much. And you can't have one of your leaders playing as as poorly as he has in the defensive zone. And and I think this is as big of a challenge as when Paul Maurice first stepped behind the bench for Claude Noel, and he was tasked, you know, in part, to kind of revamp Dustin Bufflin's game and and bring him into a two-way monster. And we we saw that, right? Like, it was almost immediate that, you know, Paul Maurice played a part in completely transforming the game of Dustin Bufflin. And that's now the task for Dave Lowry here, is is to turn Mark Scheifele into a no-doubt-about-it two-way centerman, a a 200-foot guy because I think he has it in him, and, and that's going to be the big thing moving forward. So I, I've mentioned this a couple times with, with how Mark Shifley has played in the past little while. I, I would start off by, you know, funnily enough, not putting him at center. I, I think if you don't want to play, if you don't want to fulfill the defensive responsibilities of a centerman, then go out in the wing for a while and, and have fun out there. Turn your brain off and, and go worry about offense on the wing and put Andrew Cobb down the middle. But if you're not willing to do what it takes as a centerman, then you don't get that opportunity to play there. I, I don't think Dave Lowry's going to do that, but those are some of the first steps that I'd like to see. Well, I, I mean, and, and on that, and maybe it's not as drastic as what you're talking about moving over, um, but if he is going to be a center, you know, he's going to be a top six center, of course. 
I mean, let's not just assume that first over the boards each and every time it's going to be the 55 line, especially when you've got a horse like Pierre-Luc Dubois playing the way that he is. I mean, we had a great chat with Murat Atesh, and folks, if you missed yesterday's show, go back and listen to it. It's even more poignant considering what's happened this morning with some of the major issues with the club and the biggest challenges of the coach. Um, you know, Mark Scheifele is an incredibly talented offensive player, and that's never going to be in dispute. But, you know, when you're giving up as much, sometimes more than you're getting, where does that get you as a team? And, you know, it was all... It, it, it was a real head scratcher, Brandon, to uh, you know look at that box score after the game against Buffalo, seeing what we saw on the ice, and see a six minute disparity in ice time, um, and that really did seem like it was just doing the same old thing, same old thing. And I've been banging the drum for a few years, like I, you know I wasn't saying oh you fire Maurice, fire Maurice, but I'm like how in the world do you not get to a point where you are have a you know a legitimate competition for ice time when you have players that are doing more, that are giving you more, that are doing more of the things that you need needs to win. And Tuesday might have been the best example of that at all because, I mean, you do you had one line which was really going, another one that you expected more from. And, you know, at the end when the game was on the line, it was the guys that weren't getting it done that were out there for a significant amount of time more than um, the Dubois line, which was clearly the best line and maybe the only line that was really giving Maurice what he needed that night. Yeah, it's been the best line for the majority of the season. And and Pierre-Luc Dubois has only played over 20 minutes once in the last 10 games. Like, there's no doubt who the best centerman has been so far this year. And he's, you know, the, the time on ice hasn't reflected that whatsoever. And, you know, when, when we talk about the Buffalo game, there was just, the, it was the second goal that just pissed the hell out of me. I, I just, I was so, and then you see what happens after that. Like you mentioned, the, the reward was 25 minutes of time on ice. But just go back and look at it. And the level of defensive miscommunication and lack of responsibility and complete dereliction of duty, like, it was just despicable. And when you have your centerman and Mark Shifley damn near right at the blue line without possession of the puck, the other team still has a chance to go on the attack. They have two guys down low. Cal Connors tried to fill in, but let's be honest, on the best of days, he's he's a, a below average defensive player on the wing, let alone down the middle. And then you have the easiest goal the Buffalo Sabres are going to score all season long. And then what do you do from that? You, you give them more ice time, right? Like it was just so crazy to me. And and that to me was the moment that I, I, I was just lost. And you talk about a new voice needed. That to me right there encapsulates that. Because yeah. you can't have your number one centerman up near the blue line, not even thinking, not even giving a, a thought about putting any amount of effort into getting back into the play defensively. It's just offense, 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 no discipline, no demotion, no nothing. You just, you can't run a hockey team like that. No. And, and you know what? It, and it sends a troubling message, I think to other guys in the room. Um, and, you know, it was talked about, you know, earlier today, a little bit at the press conference or maybe with some of the players, like, did it seem like there was a different standard for some guys and there isn't listen, that's the way pro sports works. I hate to fill people in right, on this. Yeah. And maybe a little, exactly. You know, some people are in particular situations because of talent or whatever that might get more opportunity. But at the end of the day, you need to win. If you're winning that way, yeah, okay, fine. I mean, whatever. I mean, it's about the standings and it's about wins and losses. But when you start losing, especially to vastly inferior teams that you have no business beating you, doing it on home ice in dreadfully dull games, um, you know, you realize that something has to change. And, you know, let's talk about Shife for a minute because I think it was after the Arizona game. We had those three days off and we had some real interesting conversations on this show. Really, for the first time, we sort of brought it up. I mean, these are all conversations you have with your buddies at the bar sometime, but we sort of brought it up with some of the media members of, you know, talking more about Shifley and Shifley's future with this team. Two years left on his deal, a, you know, one of the best value contracts in the National Hockey League but questions as to, is this going to be your leader long-term? I mean, is he the successor? He's the next captain of this team. Is he going to be the lifelong jet that Paul Maurice envisioned when he talked about a guy that, you know, would help win cups here and build a damn statue of him outside of this, the arena. And that has not been the case so far. And to me, I think from an organizational standpoint, now that this change has been made, I mean, I really do think that over the course of the next few months, I'm not suggesting anything would happen this year. Um, but I think the Winnipeg Jets are going to, you know, identify whether 
they can get what out of Mark Scheifele that they need for a long-term leader and your franchise player? Or are there other guys now that are stepping into that role? And then, you know, if you decide at some point that, you know, you're considering maybe getting out of the Mark Scheifele business, I mean, I'll say this, and this is sort of why we, you know, it's a fun sports talk topic to get to. But if you ever came to that point, if I'm speaking from Kevin Sheveldale's perspective right now, that you decided that, okay, maybe this player isn't untouchable and maybe this would be a big shakeup. I mean, it's a huge hole in your lineup. But if you're trading a player with that sort of a pedigree, with that sort of production at that contract with two more years, what could come back could absolutely change an organization and a franchise, I would argue. So um, again, this is a conversation for down the road, but I think over the next few months, we're going to find out whether Dave Lowry and that new voice is able to come in and get more out of and get the Mark Shifley that we have seen at spurts at times consistently because if they get that Mark Shifley and they have Pierre-Luc Dubois playing the way he is, that's the team that we can see doing all the things that people hoped and maybe expected coming in as a cap team this year. Yeah, no, no, totally. I And I mean, look, the, the trade Shifley talk has been going around for a while. And, and even after, you know, I, I, I kind of ripped him there a little bit. I, I'm not looking to move him whatsoever because how many point a game plus point a game center, I mean, even with the defensive deficiencies, how many of those guys are out there? There, there's there's only a handful of them and when they make 6.25 that's that's a really really valuable asset that you don't move just for the sake of moving i i think the big thing though going forward is what you touched on there and 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 really the easiest step to make is when you when you, when you talk about ice time is just split it down the middle between him and dubois there, there doesn't have to well, number one number two i don't really care if they're both playing 19 minutes a night you know there's not really much of an argument for mark Schleifley not to be busting his ass every single shift at, at both ends of the ring. Well, here's the thing. And you know what? If you're going to have a guy, like if you're going to play more and you're going to get those opportunities, earn it and and reward reward the coach's confidence in you with doing the things in both ends that you have to do. And I think that's all anyone's expecting. But it obviously wasn't happening under Paul Maurice at a time, and there wasn't anything happening on the other end. Now, Maurice at times has pushed some buttons on Shifley. We all remember him getting benched against the Leafs on Hockey Night in Canada, and that was a huge wake-up call. But that was such a massive story here because we really hadn't seen anything like that. And I would love, I would love to be a fly on the wall a week or two weeks later when Maurice is, you know, chopping it up with some of his buddies, kind of, you know, talking about really what happened. And because I imagine he had an incredible amount of frustration, despite the fact that he kept on throwing that line out the way that it was because of what he was and wasn't getting from them. Um, although, and this was a huge bone of contention by a lot of people, uh, I really believe that was the case. But I guess in his mind, he thought you had to just keep on getting them out there and that would finally come around. And it didn't. It cost them big time in that game against Buffalo. And uh, well, now we're having the conversation about Dave Lowry being the guy behind the bench tonight. Yeah. And, and on top of what makes it so disappointing, Shifley, sir, to the season, I mean, look, he, he should be producing more offensively, but that to me isn't the major issue. It looks, does it not look to you like he looks disinterested at times? Yes. And when when has that ever been, when has that moniker ever been put on Mark Shifley in his hockey career? Junior, NHL, inter, like it never. <laughs> the, the, the moniker was he was disinterested in everything yeah. else but hockey, the game coming up and all that. And Yeah, um, like DNA testing, I, I can't eat corn anymore. Like just the <laughs> stuff that only, and I say this as a compliment, on, yeah. only sports psychopaths go about like the desire to win in the competitive fire was so great that he's willing to go the extra mile in basically every walk of his life yet you see him on the ice this year and it's where's the fireman like where, where's where's the effort a lot of the times and the fact that and this is what i I'm, I'm most blown away by is that the carrot that was dangled in front of him going into the year of a spot on the canadian olympic squad if he went out and lit the world on fire, he was going to make Team Canada. He wasn't a lot going into the year, but he was definitely, you know, pencil instead of pen, right? You go out and you have a big start to the season and you're going to play maybe the greatest honor in, in all of hockey, right? To, to play and try to win a gold medal for Team Canada. And, and if anything, the game got worse from him. It, it's just, it's, it's really mind-blowing just seeing why he struggled in these certain areas. When you have somebody who by all accounts is super competitive, puts in all the work off the ice, why that hasn't translated 
90% of the time onto the ice. We've seen him do it in spurts, like you mentioned, in the playoffs. But a regular season, Mark Shifley has been one of, if not the worst defensive forwards in all of hockey. And with with his talent and IQ level, it's just inexcusable. Well, and and, and you know what? I mean, you mentioned about stepping up. I mean, I completely agree. And, and that was, to be honest, I mean, that carrot of the Olympics was one of the reasons why going into the season, I was very bullish on Shifley, you know, going into this year. I mean, I thought that, you know, if anything was going to get the best out of him in both ends of the rink, because it is a lot more. I mean, there's a ton of guys in, that wear Canadian jerseys yeah. that can score. But we've all known that, you know, if you want to be representing the Maple Leaf and wearing that thing, you got to do a lot of things well. And I, I thought that that would maybe show up in more ways um, than it has so far this season. All that being said, I think he will have an even greater magnifying glass on what he plays going forward. Um, but I, I do I, I do really think that this could be an opportunity for him. Hopefully he handles this well, sees it as maybe a fresh start, a new opportunity, and buy into what's going on. Because if it doesn't happen, I mean, then that could be really bad. But back to the Buffalo game. I, I you know, with Blake Wheeler getting hurt, coming back after that game, the days off. That was a game where I really thought that, okay, this is a time for Shifley to step up and be the best player on the ice and show that he is the guy that takes over for the C when Wheeler isn't in the lineup. Um, uh, and unfortunately, that wasn't there. And, you know, maybe that was an appropriate final game for Maurice to be on the bench because um, there was a lot of the things that we've seen the team do well, but a lot of the things that have been costing them. Um, and obviously, it became too much for a lot of people involved in the mix. And we heard the press conference this morning. Yeah, and you know, to be fair to Mark Shifley, there were there were a lot of passengers in that game against Buffalo. There was a lot of people that didn't bring their A game. I mean, you mentioned Dubois. You can maybe point to a, a couple other players, but other than that, it was a it was a completely lackluster effort. And, and it's not just Shifley that needs to you know step up and, and reach another level. A, a guy that I love, Nikolai Ehlers, has he's he's been okay this year. He hasn't been bad, but nowhere near as impactful as last year. And when you talk about secondary scoring after Connor and Dubois, you know, Nick Ehlers needs to elevate his offensive game to, to where it was the past season. A guy like Adam Lowry as well, right? Like he's, he's tasked not, not offensively with a lot, but, you know, providing a lot of the other elements of the game. And I, and I think he's had a bit of a quiet season. So, so there's, you know, the, the Shifley talk has kind of dominated the airwaves here. But up front, there's, there's still a few guys that, that need to take their game to another level. We'll, we'll see if it happens right out of the gate. I mean, we have the experience here in Winnipeg. If you remember the last game under Claude Noel, was it against, it was either Columbus or Tampa. It, oh, it was against Columbus. Yeah. I was sitting up in the upper bowl with Joel Marcoux. I'll never forget it. We walked out and he said to me, he goes, Huss, that looks like a team that's planned to get their coach fired. And I sort of laughed. And then Sunday morning, bang, it happened. And then what happened the next game? The, the Jets came out and I think it might've been the Coyotes. They kicked the ever living crap out of it. I mean, even Setaguchi looked like he wanted to be there. He had, he had a couple <laughs> goals, right? So, so it, all, all everything's really dire right now. But you never know how these things play out, right? There's a chance that you know, with a, a new voice behind the bench, everybody trying to impress the new guy, uh, the Jets come out firing and they beat a really good Capital Squad. I I don't know. It it kind of goes either way. It seems when you have a, a a new guy behind the bench because I know as a Flyers fan. Peter Laviolette's first game behind the bench. They lost 9-1 to the Capitals. So, so Yeah, well, let's hope that doesn't yeah. happen tonight. I don't, I don't Thanks for that bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Hello Buck and Ned is a little different than whatever Philly was putting out back then. So I don't think it's going to get that bad. But there, there's a wide range of outcomes, and I don't know if I would be totally shocked if it went either way for the Jets. But it is a little weird to me that, you know, there's a lot more fingers pointed towards the offensive side of things this year as opposed to the defense. The defense hasn't been, you know, perfect by any stretch, but I, I don't think there's the same amount of questions about the blue line as it is when we're talking about the forward group. No, there's no doubt about it. Dude, this has been an awesome chat. Um, we've got a ton of people in here. Folks, if you're not familiar with Brandon and skates and plates, you should be. Uh, fill people in on uh, how often you're putting out Jets content and where they can find it, dude. Yeah, Tuesday, Friday is, is generally when they drop. Uh, I might have to change that up and, and get, get something for tomorrow now because my Friday episode, which I stayed up till 1 o'clock doing, was completely useless. It was just a ton of fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, for, where you find all your podcasts, everything like that. Um, I'm on Twitter, too, at Brandon underscore Rewiki. Um, that, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. I guess I'll have to put something out for tomorrow. It would be, nice, be nice to have some positivity for a change 
it felt it feels like the past couple of weeks has just been this this tsunami of, of negativity around the team. Well, I mean, they've done okay on the weekend, but yeah, I mean, you have these duds at home on Mondays and Tuesdays and then a few days off and we're just sitting there talking about what the hell was that yeah. for 48, <laughs> 72 hours. So, uh, well, we got a game tonight. It'll be fascinating to see how they come out. Uh, hey, happy holidays to you and yours, man. Thanks for doing this. Can't wait to uh, many more fun Jets chats with you in the future. Yeah, you too, brother, and stay safe, everybody, and, and we'll talk soon, all right? You got it. There he is, Brandon Rewicki, Brandon underscore Rewicki on Twitter, and make sure you check out Skates and Plates, available wherever you get your favorite podcasts like Winnipeg Sports Talk. All right, um, great stuff with Brandon. You know, if only we were, you know, had like a studio or did this a thing, I could share a little brown jug with him right now, one of our favorite local beers and a great sponsor of ours, celebrating their fifth anniversary just a couple weeks ago. And to do that, they've also got the uh, the very special new celebratory beer, the Brute IPA for the fifth anniversary, a champagne like extra dry IPA with flavors of citrus and stone fruit. You can pick those up at the tap room. Great spot to go for a couple holiday drinks with a friend as well over on William Avenue. You can check out the new five-year tulip glasses. Beautiful to go with that brood IPA. Gift boxes available, both put together by Little Brown Jug, or you can curate your own. The new toques and other great merchandise. And it's all including free delivery right now. So you can check out the website, littlebrownjug.ca. Get your beer, your merch, your Christmas gifts all taken care of or pop down in person where the magic happens down on William Avenue. Um, our friends at Princess Auto are ready for the holidays. If you are not ready for the holidays, why don't you check out princessauto.com for some amazing gift ideas and the best deals on the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new. Is it Princess Auto? And of course, Princess Auto, great sponsors of curling, lots of curling, hopefully with fans heading into the new year. Princess Auto sponsor Jen Jones team going to the Olympics and uh, Karrion Hodgson qualifying last week to get to the mixed doubles Olympic qualifiers coming up in Portage La Prairie. Um, so big thanks to Princess Auto, two locations in Winnipeg, but again, 24-7, 365. You can check them out online and go to their Facebook page, 30-minute video and some great gift ideas if you're stuck right now as well. Um, and man, I, I think tonight, great night to check out Boston Pizza. If you're not going to the game, head on down to your local BP, watch the Jets and Caps on the big screen. Dave Lowry's coaching debut is the interim coach replacing Paul Maurice and enjoy those amazing pizzas, ice cold schooners and world famous Boston's wings. And if you're staying home tonight or any night, make it a great night and order BP at home. You can deliver, get it delivered through their internet site at bostonpizza.com or call your local BP and ask for delivery or takeout. All right, Kenny Weeb's going to join us in a few minutes, a little emergency visit from Weeb's world. Um, but Remo, uh, you know, we heard from the coach and we heard, well, then all the former coach, we heard from the general manager, Kevin Sheveldayoff. There's also some very interesting comments from Winnipeg Jet players. Um, Josh Morrissey spoke as well as Andrew Kopp. I think uh, you've got Morrissey ready first so we can go with that one. Uh, and then we'll uh, hear a couple of comments from Andrew Kopp who looked absolutely despondent at times during what was probably one of the most difficult press conferences of his career. Although he's always speaking his mind and he certainly did that. But uh, let's start off with Josh Morrissey. Uh, he spoke of his familiarity with Dave Lowry here with Dave we've um I've known him you know back to world juniors and stuff like that and um you know Dave has uh been around the game a long time he's obviously played over a thousand games and brings a lot of experience um you know and he comes prepared uh you know I know with Dave you know there's no gray area with him you'll know where you stand and um what's expected of you and um you know that's uh something that um as a player I think you know, especially mid-season, and uh, is important to have that transparency. And um, you know, we as a group, you know, it's not, I guess, rocket science. Um, we feel we need to be better and um, you know, compete at a higher level. And um, you know, a lot of that falls on the players. But you know, with David, we're going to be prepared. You know, he's going to. Uh, like I said, be transparent with us um, on what he expects and is looking for. And uh, again, as a player, you know, that's all you can want.
doing penalty killing, playing on the power play at times, and playing all up and down the lineup. And, uh, you know, Maurice mentioned that today was a good day for the Winnipeg Jets. Um, Andrew Kopp was asked about that, and he said, I think that sort of remains to be seen how good of a day today was. Um, still trying to find my bearings, I think. Uh, definitely was uh, pretty surprising this morning. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I guess it'll be remain to be seen on whether this is going to be a good day. And, um, yeah, I think it's kind of up to, to the players to, to decide which one it is on, at the end of the day. You know, if we play like we're capable of and go on a little run, then maybe it will be. All right, so uh, Andrew Kopp, he had a number of comments. The other one that was real, quite interesting, and we'll have that for you now, uh, was him talking about what goes into a coaching change, why it happens, why maybe it was necessary. And, you know, if, if he and his teammates, um, you know, had maybe got a little too comfortable. Um, and he spoke about being comfortable and um, being uncomfortable uh, with a very interesting answer. Here's how it sounded. Um, yeah. I think more so it's not that we got too comfortable, it's that we didn't know how to be uncomfortable anymore. And, um, you know, when you're when you're uncomfortable, sometimes that makes you perform that much better. It gets you out of your comfort, out of your comfort zone and makes you push to, to, you know, new limits, you know, push yourself harder than you knew you could or, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I don't necessarily think... I don't necessarily have a full opinion on whether I completely agree or completely disagree with that, but um, I mean, I do think there is some something to be said for when guys are uncomfortable. Sometimes that brings out the best. And what makes a player uncomfortable? Um, I mean, I think maybe not uncomfortable is the right word, but I mean, if you are a player that is going to play I don't want to it's kind of a hard question but I feel like if you feel so that you know no matter how you perform you're going to continue in your role then uh, that's comfortability I don't think we had that but there is something to be said for you know now that there is a new voice a new person making decisions if I don't have a good night tonight what's going to happen and I think that can go across the board and I think that can improve performance all right interesting comment from uh, Andrew Kopp of course Ken Weave was down at the rink today uh we'll get his comments throughout um you know the next uh, 15 minutes or so on the program um do want to give a big thanks to our friends over at the Nick and Nikki DQ group of course four locations in Winnipeg DQ Niverville I guess that's just outside the city. Neverville, Northgate, Polo Park, and St. Anne's. Great deal right now for the holidays at St. Anne's. Buy one uh, box of the uh, Dilly Bars or uh, Buster Bars, my personal favorites, and get a second one for 99 cents. And if you haven't already, get onto their Instagram at DQ Manitoba. Some amazing giveaways all Christmas season long with the 12 days of Christmas with the Nick and Nikki DQ group. And of course, you can also order your holiday cakes online at DQ Manitoba. Pick them up at any of the uh, locations for Nick and Nikki DQ in Winnipeg and in Southern Manitoba. And coming up, folks, it is Friday, obviously a very newsy Friday, big game tonight, coaching change this morning, but that will not prevent us from doing another marble race, courtesy of our friends at Canadian Club. So. For those of you that are in the chat right now, I know we've got a lot of new people. First thing, welcome. Love to have you here. It's great to see so many new faces and new names in the chat. We do this every day at 1 p.m. Uh, do us a favor. Hit that red subscribe button right away. You do have to be subscribed to win. And as we get into the interview with Ken, look in the chat. You will see a cue, a prompt from Michael Remus saying, put in exclamation mark marbles to enter. We'll grab them all. We'll do a marble race at the end. And we've got a uh, Winnipeg Sports Talk hoodie like this with our friends, Canadian Club, and the bomb, the official sponsor of the Bombers to give away. And we might even go into the tickle trunk for a bottle of CC for an I Love Rye package as well. So pay attention to the chat. You do have to be subscribed to win. 
And at the end of the program, we'll throw everyone that's entered. You'll all get a marble and may the best marble win. So that's all coming up. Um, oh, and I just got a note from our, feral, uh, from, uh, our pal Trevor Knott. Um, tons of nice local one owner consignment vehicle for sales, remarketing all makes and models. And they have about 30 Teslas in stock. So uh, I should have mentioned the Teslas earlier today, but uh, why not? Talk to the folks at Knott Auto Corp if you're looking for a vehicle, especially if you're looking to go electric. All right. Uh, really appreciate Weeb's World himself joining us today. I know it's been a very, very busy day for Ken, but um, man, um, uh, uh, listen, we've talked a lot about the potential of changes happening with this Winnipeg Jets club. I think we all knew that, you know, if the, things continued to go the way they were, something would happen. And in professional sports, it often is the coach, although with the tenure Palmer he's had, I think many of us thought that maybe he would have this year and then we would see what happened. Um, but to have this happen on a game day, I mean, what were your, what was your reaction when you first got the notice and how surprised were you of the timing of what happened today going into this weekend, this game tonight against the Caps? Stunned, uh, Husser. I uh, was not anticipating seeing that in my uh, inbox or on Twitter uh, when I woke up to uh, head myself over to the rink. Uh, we knew that the seat was getting warmer. There's no doubt about that. But uh, I mean, if the Jets, I mean, the Jets are planning on firing Paul Maurice. Uh, you had two days between games, so that would have been an optimal time to do it if there ever is such a thing. Uh, Paul Maurice uh, prepared this week like he was going to be coaching tonight. Uh, we saw a motion from Paul Maurice. Uh, there was a, uh, you know, there was a door. I wouldn't call it a full door slam uh, earlier this week, but uh, we saw some of that frustration that he had spoken about uh, in his presser this morning. Uh, we saw a guy who was continually looking for solutions and, uh, after cleaning out the carburetor, uh, they were having trouble getting the ignition going here, uh, quite frankly. And that's what that's what he said. And uh, the most shocking thing to me, Huss, is the perspective that uh, Paul Maurice was able to have under these circumstances. I mean, it's not often where someone who says, uh, you know what, uh, I've got my dream job. I love it here. I love the city. But uh, I'm just going to hand the keys back uh, to you right here. I'm driving the vehicle, but I think someone else should be steering the car. Uh, you don't often go to a situation where you hand the keys in before the lease is up uh, to, to piggyback off what you were just talking about for the uh, good folks at not. Uh, it, it's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, Paul Maurice, to me, has is how, how it would describe it. He sounded like someone who needs a break. Uh, he needs to get back to being recharged. Uh, he kept going to the solutions box, and those answers were not resonating the same way that they once did. And to me, as when you're a head coach, that's got to be the most frustrating thing. You know the answers, but you can't get the players to either produce at that level with a consistent enough basis or find other solutions. So um, it's interesting. I mean, I, I understand that there's a lot of folks, mm. a lot is maybe an unfair uh, assessment, but that vocal minority, uh, there are a lot of those people will be celebrating today and you understand why. But uh, I think on today, Huss, I think it's important to remember that uh, Paul Maurice brought this franchise and organization to new heights. Uh, there were a lot of good times under his stewardship. And, uh, you know, that's not to say he always made the most optimal deployment decisions and that he didn't make any mistakes. Any coach that's around for eight years or almost eight full years will make mistakes. And Paul Maurice is no exception. But what has been forgotten is that he put up a 114 point season and uh, helped guide this team to a Western <laughs> Conference final. Uh, I think this is a guy who, although he wasn't ready to give the answer when I asked him directly today, I think Paul Maurice will be behind another bench. I think he's a smart man. He's a smart hockey coach. And once he gets recharged, I think he's going to find himself a situ into, in a situation down the road where he can help another mm -hmm. hockey club. In the meantime, Paul Maurice is not going to stop rooting for the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, I think he would be thrilled to see them succeed. He's not going to go home and say, man, I hope the Jets don't win another game. That's that's not the way that he rolls or the way that he feels. Uh, he'll always have a part of his heart with this organization, with this city. And uh, he sounded like a guy who needed a break. Like when he, when he said openly that I don't have a game to prepare mm. for and I don't need to chase a job, uh, there was an element of relief, I think, in Paul Maurice's voice as well. And, you know, as a guy who's been fired before, Huss, you don't want to be looking over your shoulder. And I'm not saying that Paul Maurice was, but – in order to, you know, step aside or whatever way you want to call it, um, I think he's going to be able to um, breathe easily knowing that he gave everything that he mm. could to this organization. And he'll go through whatever process of, uh, you know, going through the 
assessment process and sort of dealing with things from there. But uh, in, the, in the immediate aftermath, Huss, he sounded like a guy who was content with the decision and proud of what he's accomplished. Yeah, yeah, no, I, listen, and he should be. Um, you know, I think that, you know, and again, I'm sort of with you. I mean, I think that, you know, some of the the the, the loudest voices aren't maybe representative of the fan base, uh, you know, overall. But it wasn't just the fan base. It was pretty clear from listening to Kevin Shevel Dayoff right. that he was expecting a lot more out of this club. And, um, you know, and I don't think that when, you know, if, if it went as Paul kind of walked into the office and said, oh, you know what, I think it's time. It was clear. I mean, they both said that they had a number of these conversations before. Is this the right path going forward? Um, and I think all of them want wants what's best for the club. But let me ask you this. I mean, you cover this team as close as anyone. I mean, we were mentioning this earlier when I was talking to Rewiki. This team was 9-3-3. Three, and three. They had a tough start. They went, what, 14 games with losing only one in regulation. They had two games against the Edmonton Oilers, that for my money, were as good 60-minute efforts as we've seen in a long time from this club. Everyone, including like Mark Shifley, really, you know, matching up to the challenge of Connor McDavid. And in the month since then, um, it has been inconsistent and there's been some dreadful, dull performances and losses on home ice against teams that uh, a team with that much talent in the dressing room has no business losing to. Where where did it go wrong? I mean, how, how are we considering where this team was like a, literally a month ago or five weeks ago? How are we here today, Ken? That's a great question, Hassan. And then that is what the examination and will be done. Uh, Paul Maurice has been trying to undergo that examination for every minute since that four-minute power play was unable to connect. I mean, honestly, we've talked about this before. Since that very moment of losing that game to the Oilers in a shootout, the Jets have not been the same team. They have not been able to find that same level of urgency or execution that they had the night before when they took it to the Oilers. Yes, it was the end of a long road trip, but that's the way it goes. They they elevated their level against a team that entered that two-game set as the best team in the Western Conference. Now, both of those teams are struggling just to stay above or just below the line. Of course, part of that's got to be on coaching and deployment, uh, but that's also us, a reminder to the players. Uh, and that's why your clip with Andrew Kopp is very uh, noteworthy, uh, and that's what I'll be looking for tonight. Uh, sorry to jump the queue here, but we've had this discussion as early as just two days ago. Uh, one thing that I'd be confident on the cool bet lines for tonight is that there will not be a six minute disparity in ice time between the top two centers on the Winnipeg Jets. No, there's absolutely. And we've talked a lot about Shifley. Uh, and I think Shifley clearly as, you know, the number one center, certainly under Paul Maurice, um, one of the most important players and offensive catalyst for this club, but a guy that plays tons and has been leaving you know, something to be desired maybe in other aspects of the game. Um, you know, how Mark Shifley handles this and what happens with him going forward, I think might be the single most important thing that the general manager will learn about his player and his team going forward. Um, because as I said, you can change the coach all you want, but if you're getting the same thing out of the same players, um, that's the moment where the general manager decides that things can change. Now, if you're talking about a player like Shifley, I think that's down the road. That's an off season thing. I mean, he will have the opportunity, but let's talk about the choice of Dave Lowry. I mean, this isn't Bruce Boudreaux coming in after an organization has entirely cleaned house. This is a guy that was already in the room. It was already in the coach's room. Hell, his son plays on the team. It's a very unique, unique situation. What do you make of the choice of Dave Lowry to be that guy going forward? And I mean, when you look at him, what are the biggest challenges for Lowry starting tonight when uh, he begins his time as right now the interim head coach of the Winnipeg Jets against the Caps? Yeah, Dave Lowry is a smart hockey man. He's an intelligent guy. He played a long time. Anyone who says he doesn't have experience needs to needs to pay a little bit closer attention. No, he has not been a head coach at this level, and that's no guarantee he's going to be a great one. But uh, he's been preparing for this moment for a long, long time. He was one of those guys who uh, had coach qualities as a player, as a uh, heart and soul type of guy on the periphery and the edges of the roster at the end of his career. He learned for, from some great coaches. He's been on the staffs of some great coaches, and he's a bright hockey mind himself. Uh, he's a guy who makes it fun to come to the rink. He also has an old, he, he straddles that fine line between having some old school intensity qualities, but also knows that it's all about being able to relate to your players and have fun at the rink because hockey's the most fun when you're enjoying things and you're usually enjoying things the most when you're winning. So 
For me, I think that uh, Dave Lowry has been around the organization for long enough to know what the issues are that need to be tackled head on. And he has not been around long enough to have too much of a loyalty to a certain uh, faction of the dressing room. I'm not saying the Jets are split or anything like that, but he doesn't have an allegiance to certain players who have been there for, you know, all or the majority of his tenure. <laughs> I think he'll look at things a little bit more openly. Uh, I think that there'll be an internal competition element, which I think is uh, necessary and needed. And I think that he'll do a good job because let's, let's face it. Dave Lowry wants to be a head coach right now. He is an interim head coach. You know what all interim head coaches want to remove the interim label. Uh, the last coach who came to the jets was an interim coach. He lasted almost eight years. This is not to say they're parallel situations because Paul Maurice had had a lot more head coaching experience, but it'll be interesting to see how Dave Lowry handles it and to see how the players respond to Dave Lowry. I think he will find a way to um, ingratiate himself with this group. I think he will push them and I think that he will do an excellent job. But like you said, it's about how the players respond and right at the top of that list with Blake Wheeler being out is Mark Shifley. He wears a letter. He has the most ice time on this hockey team and how he plays and leads is going to be absolutely critical for this team both in the short term and in the long term as they try to reach those goals that they all have for themselves. You know, Ken, you, you mentioned that, you know, Lowry being, uh, you know, a relatively new addition to the coaching staff doesn't have that long history with any of the players. He does with one, and it happens to be his son, Adam. Um, I say this sort of in jest, but I, I am wondering from your perspective, I mean, any unique challenges to coming into a situation where your son is an important player on the team? I don't see that as being a problem, just based on the personalities of both individuals in this situation. I mean, hey, this is totally different, but I was coached by my father for a very long time on the baseball field. Uh, you have a different relationship, but you park that at the door when you step onto the ice or onto the field. Uh, I think that Adam Lowry has a very clearly defined role. His father knows exactly what he's good at, and it's not like a situation where you're going to be going from a fourth-line player to a first-line player. Adam Lowry has an important role with the Winnipeg Jets. He will continue to play that role. Uh, whether or not he continues on the power play, well, that'll be interesting to monitor. But, I mean, nobody knows Adam better than Dave, but he also knows what his strengths are. So I think he'll utilize those strengths very well, in much in the same regard that he was used with Paul Maurice. Uh, I don't see there being any challenges. I know I think Kevin Deneen played for his father at the NHL level. It is a little bit of a more of an obscure kind of statistic, but, um, you know, often in that situation, the parent is harder on the kid than he is on some of the other players. I don't think that's going to be an issue here because Adam Lowry brings his lunchbox to the rink every day. Uh, so he doesn't need to be prodded by the head coach or, you know, anything of that mm. nature. So I think it's a unique situation. I think they'll both enjoy it, mm. but when they step on the ice, it's coach and player and not a father son. Uh, the father son happens when they're at mm. the kitchen table. Well, and I'll say this, uh, I think Adam Lowry, um, as much as any player in that Jet locker room, has the respect of his teammates. And, you know, it might be different if he was a different kind of player, maybe had a little bit of a less tenure with the club. Um, but I think we all know who Adam he's Lowry a leader, is. Right? He's a leader on this team. He's not He's not someone who needs a bump from his father. He, he's a guy who's been around a long time. He's part of the leadership core, and he plays an important role. Um, uh, well, special teams, Jamie Compon's back. Um, you know, to me, and I said this, you know, yesterday with Murat, I mean, you can, you know, feel however you want about Paul Maurice as a head coach, but this is a results-based business, and the results on special teams have been abysmal this year and are a big reason why the Jets are in the situation that they are. Coaching plays a big, big part in that. Um, how do you see this going forward? What are the biggest challenges for the coaching staff when it comes to the special teams? And how big of a factor is the return of Jamie Compon, who's certainly been coaching from a distance, but having him back in the locker room and on the bench beginning tonight? Yeah, I think, I mean, Paul Murray said it best. Jamie Compon is an energy giver. So for a team that needs kind of a boost and maybe an uplifting, uh, Jamie Compon being around will certainly help matters on that front. I think when it comes to the power play, having Jamie on site and being able to, you know, help with the teaching and the, you know, the implementation of some of the philosophies that will certainly help as well. He could do that in video form, but you know, we've seen us look at the engagement level on a zoom call compared to what you see in public when someone is standing in front of you, that will obviously be a big help. Uh, Dave Lowry has been involved in this, in this, in this uh, penalty killing aspect. 
Uh, I would continue to think he'll still have his thumbprints on that. But what was interesting, uh, part of the what the interesting part, Kevin Sheveldayoff leaving the door open for potentially another assistant coach to be brought on board, whether it's on the interim or kind of longer term. What we do know, when a coach comes in, he usually likes to have someone he's familiar with. Will Dave Lowry reach it for someone who has penalty killing experience? That remains to be seen, but it wouldn't surprise me if he brings someone that he is comfortable with onto his staff, uh, to, you know, whether it's specifically to look at the penalty kill or, I mean, again, he's become friendly and has relationships with the players that are the coaches that are there, but it wouldn't be a surprise if another person was brought in um, down the road at some point on that front as well. But you're right. Special teams have to improve. Part of that is mm-hmm. coaching. But to me, as I've always said, us execution is ultimately what comes down. You can have the best plan. If you don't execute the plan, it doesn't, you can toss the plan into the old trash bin. Hey, uh, for everyone new, welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk. Great to have you with us. We're here every day, 1 to 3 p.m. live on YouTube. The podcast drops around 3.30 in time for your drive home. If you're with us on YouTube, make sure to hit that red subscribe button. Stick around for the marble race. We've got some great prizes. We will have a little bit, bit of fun on a Friday to end the program. And, of course, Ken Weeb is with us. Ken Weeb, you can read his work at sportsnet.ca. And make sure, I imagine that the Kenny and Rennie chat room is going to be popping tonight after the game yeah. uh, with the news of the day. But let me ask you about Kevin Sheveldayoff. I thought sure. that his, um, his, his availability might have been the most interesting one that he's ever given because um, there was he was pretty direct about some of the reasons why this happened today. And I'm not sitting here saying Paul Maurice was voluntold uh, that this was going to be happening, but I do. I certainly did get from Maurice uh, from Shevel Dayoff, and Paul Maurice is pretty clear. They've had this conversation a number of times before. Um, that I think there was sort of a mutual agreement that this might be the right time for something like this to happen. I think he sort of put it on the players, absolutely. But I just w- what was your thoughts on what we heard from Shevel Dayoff, and 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 now that this move has been made what he's going to be looking at going into the holiday season and the new year with a new coach, because the whole change, the coach conversation has left the building. Now, Ken, it really is on, on the players to, to figure this out. Yeah, it really is. Uh, the one thing I think that maybe Kevin Shevel day off uh, in his walk back to the office, uh, maybe would have wished that he had said was no, I wasn't planning to fire Paul Maurice. Uh, he definitely went out of his way to thank him for his contributions and to, you know, talk about how much he appreciated what he had done for the organization. Uh, But he didn't provide a lot of cover when he was asked directly two times if a firing was perhaps inevitable. Uh, But having said that, I mean, he also talked about the frankness of their discussions with one another uh, previously. And I think the biggest thing that stood out for me, Huss, in the entire conversation uh, was, as you mentioned, he challenged the players to be better and then he told us about it. I mean, a lot of the times we'd hear the old uh, what happens behind closed 100%. doors stays, stays behind closed doors. And, and that's OK. But in this situation, I think that that's Kevin Shevel day off doubling down. All we've heard about is that the roster needed to improve. Personnel wasn't good enough. Well, guess what? They addressed the personnel and now the performance has not been good enough. Uh, and you can you know this very well. And so does Kevin Shevel day off. And so do the players after the coach goes. Well, either the GM goes or the players start to go. So this is a massive wake-up call. And the fact that you're right, Kevin Sheveldayoff uh, being willing to share that accountability and saying, hey, guys, guess what? This is up to you. You want to be satisfied with being below the, bu- below the line or being a bubble team? Well, that's fine. But I don't think anybody is happy with that, whether that's Paul Maurice, Dave Lowry, Kevin Sheveldayoff, or any of those players. Although Blake Wheeler was quick to say in training camp, what's on paper doesn't mean you know what. The fact of the matter is this is a team that has not performed up to expectations. And when that happens, changes are made. And you're right. Usually it doesn't just end with one change. So um, I think it's going to be fascinating to see how the players respond. I think there's a lot of people who need to play better. And I expect those players to lead by example. And that's the only way out of this for the Winnipeg Jets. It's not, you know, this is not a, something you, uh, you can't come back from. Somebody sent me a note saying that, you know, the season can't be salvaged. There's 54 games left in the schedule. There, there's a lot of time to define what the Winnipeg Jets are going to be. But those Winnipeg Jets need to be the authors of this story. And quite frankly, to this point, those players 
let their coach down in some regards. So now it's up to them to make sure they don't do that to Dave Lowry. Well, because if they do do that to Dave Lowry, some of them won't be Winnipeg Jets anymore. And now, you know, the situation can change. I, it was, uh, I think one of the most significant, uh, well, it's a significant change. We haven't had much change over the course of the last eight years. I think that goes without saying when it comes to coaching. Um, but the gauntlet was thrown down by the general manager. This move has been made. This is the way things are going to be for the rest of the year. Um, there's a lot of hockey left to be played. And we'll see what this does. Just quickly before we go. By the way, last call for marbles, everybody. Exclamation mark marbles. Remus is going to shut that off, uh, close it up in about 30 seconds. So if you just popped in and you haven't got in, last call for it. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, I I don't know what to expect tonight. I It could be one of a number of ways. Um, how do you think this team will react to what's happened this morning? Um, I mean, and the fact that there's a game like eight hours after finding out that uh, Paul Maurice the only coach that the majority of these players have ever had as a Winnipeg Jet, and many of them in the National Hockey League, is no longer behind the bench. I expect them to play one of their better games this season, Huss. Obviously, it's a shock to the system for the players, but uh, I expect it already after a subpar showing against the Buffalo Sabres that with two days of practice, this team would be laser-focused for a meeting against Alex Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals. Uh, this only intensifies that uh, intensity and focus, in my opinion. I think there's a lot of people that could view this as a wide open opportunity. Uh, we talked earlier about, you know, coaches always have their favorites who they lean on. If you're one of those people that wasn't quite yet in that camp, you're licking your chops at the opportunity to say, hey, you know what, Dave, I can give you more. So give me more because I'll show you that I deserve more. Uh, and to me, I think this is just a, a fantastic opportunity for someone like Jansen Harkins. Uh, Huss, we saw after all that time last year as a healthy scratch, you know who Jansen Harkins was talking to on the ice when he was doing extra skating, extra shooting, extra things along the boards, picking up pucks, chipping them out? That's Dave Lowry. Uh, if you're David Gustafson, although you handled yourself incredibly well at the podium and in talking about your opportunity, you're saying, you know what? I can show Dave Lowry that I'm ready to be the fourth line center and to be on the penalty killing unit. And you know what? In some ways, if you're Vili Hanela, you're thinking, if there's a new coach, maybe I can force my way onto the team uh, and see where things go from there. Because, I mean, that was the other thing. I asked uh, Kevin Chevaldeoff about maybe an injection of youth. Um, he didn't completely attack the answer there, but Murat followed up with a question about it as well. Um, he wasn't ready to commit to saying there was a, a new injection of youth or energy required. But when a head coach changes... Maybe Dave Lowry says, you know what, I'd like this. And, you know, that opens up the dialogue between the head coach and the general manager. We know a lot of things will be done in a collaborative sense. Uh, but Dave, the one thing about Dave Lowry, he's not afraid to have his opinion shown or uh, shared. And I expect him to use that as he takes over this job. But I also expect him to do a good job because much like Dom Ducharme had said, when you study for the exam, you're not nervous when the exam day arrives. Uh, hey, last one for you and quickly on the way out. Um, a lot of talk about David Gustafson this week, finally got the recall, spoke yesterday. Maurice had said yesterday that, you know, he kind of envisions him coming in in a fourth line role, despite how he's excelled at the PK at the AHL level in the situation. He wasn't looking to use him in that role. Now that he's gone, do you think Gustafson, if there is a number of penalties to kill, do you think he gets that chance tonight? Or will it basically be the plan that Maurice had going into this game and Lowry will change it on the fly? If yeah, that's be. a great it's a great question, Huss. I, I don't think it will be long before David Gustafson is killing penalties. I, I'm not saying it's a lead pipe lock. It happens tonight, but it's going to happen sooner than later. Uh, he's That's a role that he excels at. So whether it's tonight or later on, I think that's a person that can help get that penalty kill turned around. But uh, I would not be confident to laying down a large sum to say that it will be tonight, but it also wouldn't surprise me one bit if it is tonight. So uh, I'm with you. I'll just be watching with, uh, <laughs> with great intent. Uh, I think that David Gustafson will help this team. And this is the other thing we've talked about a lot of us. When Dave Lowry was with the Los Angeles Kings, that's a team that used its fourth line a considerable amount. So I expect the Jets fourth line to not be in those four or five minute windows uh, for the foreseeable future. They need to get their fourth line a little bit more involved. 
but I also understand that they need to get their high end guys, their top end guys involved, and they're going to still continue to play some heavy minutes. But I think that that disparity in minutes uh, is going to come mm-hmm. down at a at a at a large level, and you know it's it's a big opportunity for players, for the coaching staff, and for the management team to find out what direction this uh, ship is going in. Uh, because as you mentioned, if they don't respond to the coaching change, uh, the next thing that happens is the core uh, gets starts to be questions asked of it and moves hmm. potentially can be made. Uh, uh, I would uh, say some of those questions are already asked about the core sure. even before today happened. I think that kind of goes without saying, hey, just on the way out, uh, there's a lot of new people, I think, that have maybe found us for the first time, <laughs> folks, uh, tonight after the hockey game. The Illegal Curve guys tee it up, and then Kenny and Rennie take it home. Fill them in on the channel, as well as the the long form uh, that you had yesterday following our show, if people missed it. Yeah, come to go to the Kenny and Rennie YouTube channel. You can catch it on my Weebs World Twitter account, but uh, fire it over to the uh, YouTube channel if you can, or wherever you get your podcasts if you prefer. We had just a fantastic uh, turn-back-the-clock visit with Joe Piscucci, a local broadcasting Scooch is the best. He was fantastic, and also John Morosi, who is from the MLB Network and the NHL Network, uh, just one of the one of the sharpest minds in sports and broadcasting. Uh, he shared some incredible stories with us there, and uh, we really enjoyed that part of it. and And we know that it will be a fiery edition of the Kenny and Rennie Show. We'll probably be up around ten thirty five to forty five somewhere in that window. And I assume we will spend a lot of time talking about uh, coaching changes. Uh, we know there are a lot of people who will be dropping some I told you so's. And uh, you know what? Those people are also welcome. And you can come on down to Winnipeg, as Willie Jefferson likes to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're here for you to gloat. And uh, we're also here to discuss uh, how the Jets got to this point and where they will go moving forward. I think it will be a fantastic discussion uh, coming up after the Illegal Curve Boys. And us, always great to visit. Uh, we know it's been an interesting uh, set of days and weeks here uh, in the peg. Uh, great lid, by the way. Also, you made me incredibly. I don't have time to run to Dairy Queen for a blizzard, but I'm <laughs> craving one right now, Huss. Uh, I, I'll have to. Get we may have to get a special chat. delivery for you. We'll see if DQ <laughs> Nick's in the chat. You know, he can make that happen. Uh, hey, I'm looking forward to the program tonight. And if you're like me, who often might go out a little bit late after the game, the beautiful thing about the podcast is that uh, it's ready on audio or just fire up the YouTube and start it from scratch when you get home. Always great content. Uh, say hi to Rennie. I'm looking forward to the show tonight and uh, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week, Weaver. Yeah, thanks for having me, Huss. Have a great uh, weekend yourself and same to everyone in the chat room and whoever's listening. Take Give him a follow on Twitter at Weaves World. And of course, he'll have uh, lots coming up on sportsnet.ca as well with the latest on the Winnipeg Jets. All right, we went a little bit long. We do have to get out so we can get this podcast up. For those of you that haven't been here before, this is when we get fun. We've had a lot of discussions about Maurice leaving the Winnipeg Jets, the team going forward. Now to finish the program on Friday's We crank up a marble race. Our friends at Canadian Club have given us some great prizes. Uh, One of these, Winnipeg Sports Talk co-branded hoodies with our friends at CC and, of course, the official sponsor, the Bombers. And I do believe I have enough in the tickle trunk for uh, a little I Love Rye package as well with a a bottle of CC and maybe a few other trinkets. Um, So first place is the hoodie. Uh, Hopefully we have your size. Second place is the I Love Rye package, including some great Canadian club, which goes great for the holiday season. And of course, CC, they've got big Canadian club displays at all the Manitoba liquor marts right now. And you'll also get bonus air miles with your with your purchase. And you can enter to win 5,000 air miles as well. Let's get Remus in here. Been a crazy show today, dude. Um, but uh, I, you know, thanks to everyone that's been here. If you're getting in the marble race, make sure you click the subscribe button so you are entered to, you are eligible to win our great prizes from Canadian Club. And um, great way to finish off a wild week. Although, uh, as I said, I knew we'd be doing a marble race today, Reem. I did not think that we'd be uh, talking about this all day. Hey, Darby Orr, thanks very much for the super chat. In respect. For the Pomo era. Nice to know. We always appreciate your generosity and support. Um, so, Remo, uh, if you want, I can do the cool bet lines right now as you get the uh, the marbles all ready to go. Yeah, I'm going to close the entries right now then. We have yeah. two, 213 entries. Whoa, biggest one ever. This is biggest big- marble race ever. This is going to be wild. Hopefully, well, can we do 213? I guess. I guess we will find out right away. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, close off the entries, load them up, and uh, I'll give you a quick update on uh, some of the lines with our friends over at CoolBet.com. If you've never bet at CoolBet, use the promo code WST for a 100% bonus on your first deposit up to $200. Uh, pretty busy night in the National Hockey League tonight. Uh, you got Vegas at the Rangers. Vegas, road favorite, minus 135. Penguins, a huge favorite over the Buffalo Sabres. Sabres, by the way, beat the Wild last night, I believe, in a shootout. So they got back-to-back -back wins after not winning in seven and winning one of 11 heading into Winnipeg on Tuesday night. Uh, but what is it? Three and four days, second end of a back-to-back. -back. Pittsburgh, a huge favorite, minus 312. Maybe the Sabres are on to something here. Plus 255 on the road. Just about a straight pick them between the Dallas Stars and the Blues. Blues minus 110. Stars minus 106. Basically a pick them. And pretty much the same numbers for this game tonight between the Jets and the Capitals. Jets, a very slight favorite at minus 111. Capitals at minus 106. But as we talked about yesterday, um, Alex Ovechkin needs one power play goal uh, to be the all-time NHL leader. We're looking at the uh, props for player goals today. <laughs> Ovechkin is less than even money to score tonight. He sort of always scores against the Jets. Uh, minus 105 to score in the game tonight. Uh, Kyle Connors at plus 135. Ehlers is plus 185. Shifley plus 220. And Pierre-Luc Dubois plus 230. And he has been playing very, very well lately. Um, so you can check out all of those totals. Um, over at Cool Bet, you know, just click on the game, uh, and they've got winners, totals, goals, points, shots as well. Uh, what's Ovechkin's shot total? Over four and a half shots is even money, plus 100. So, uh, if you think Ovi's going to be a shooting gallery tonight, and he'll get five shots, you can get even money on that as well. Uh, other games tonight Preds and Blackhawks, Blackhawks minus 139 faves at home, and uh, the Ducks, a massive minus 333 favorite against the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, NFL, two games tomorrow. Uh, this Raiders-Browns game, an absolute mess. I don't even know if the Browns are going to have enough players to field a team. Um, it's off the board right now. I did see it, Raiders minus three and a half earlier. The game I can't wait for is this Patriots-Colts game. Colts minus two and a half. Uh, we went through all of the lines today and made picks on the lock shop. If you haven't seen it, just head over to my Twitter or Dustin Nielsen's Twitter at Nielsen TSN 1260. You can watch the episode. Or if you're listening on the podcast or enjoy listening to podcasts, just grab the audio feed, go to Apple, go to Spotify, put in lock shop and uh, do us a favor and subscribe and join us daily. Of course, that also brought to you by Cool Bet Canada. Um, and while Remus gets it together, I was probably going to spend a lot more time talking about this before the news of this morning. But uh, how about that game last night? Chiefs, Chargers, an absolute classic overtime win. Mahomes to Kelsey. Chiefs now in the driver's seat in the AFC. First team to 10 wins. They won seven in a row. Um, but from a football fan's perspective, not a Chiefs fan or a Chargers fan, I can't wait for another 10 years of Mahomes versus Herbert classics twice a year. This is going to be an incredible rivalry. The team split their games this year, both winning on the road. And um, Herbert made some big, big league throws that almost no one else on the planet could make last night. But at the end, it was Patrick Mahomes and really the Chiefs defense. The difference in that game with those fourth down stops on the goal line two of them in the first half another one later on Chargers returned the favor as well on kansas city just an absolute classic of a football game to begin this week uh, and luckily most of the players that were there chris jones was out it was a big reason why the chargers seemed to run all over the chiefs uh but COVID, just an absolute disaster right now in many leagues national hockey league sounds like a number of teams are going to be shut down until after christmas and um we'll see whether they're even going to be able to play this raiders and browns game tomorrow all right, Remo, how are we looking for the marbles? An all-time record of people that have joined us in the chat. We've still got over 600 now getting ready for uh, the exciting finale to another week of Winnipeg Sports Talk. Yeah, a lot of comments. I remember we had eight, at least 800 after Shifley uh, hit Jake Evans the day after that. But uh, we had consistently over 700 for today. So uh, this has been the Amazing. most we've had in a while. Incredible. Um, you know, we've got a lot more subs, so we're at what, like close to 6,100. So yeah, hit that red button, hit the thumbs up. We got 403 likes by my count right now. Absolutely incredible support that we've seen. What a week it's been. 
uh, for Winnipeg Sports, starting with the Bombers Grey Cup. So we've been pretty, pretty busy here. And uh, I see, I'm see i seeing some stuff in chat that they moved the Raiders game. And I want to be honest, like, it's so hard to keep up. Uh, it seems like everyone's on the COVID list. Uh, there's a number of NHL teams that are getting shut down. I've been busy following the uh, Paul Maurice news. So... Yeah, uh, listen, I, I, all yeah. that stuff, you know, TSN Sportsnet, the Free Press, the Sun, they'll have all the latest information on that. People are coming here to hear about the Winnipeg Jets, about the coaching change, and for a marble race to finish it up on Winnipeg Sports Talk with our friends at Canadian Club. So let's do that, and then we'll get the podcast up for everyone to listen to it on the way to their game tonight. All right, we've got everyone in here, an all-time record, over 200 marbles in it. Uh, Remo, what course are we doing today? I'm sticking with one that we've done before. Uh, I've been going off with ones, you know, different ones. Yeah, no, this and is a good one. I think I the remember funnel. this one. This is the funnel. So um, if you're in the if you're in the marble race, you know, do us a favor. Hit, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Help this channel grow. Every, any interaction with us on social media is a huge help, and we appreciate uh, every one of you guys uh, that are in here having fun yeah, with and us today. Yeah, the new today. people. Make sure you come back next week. We'll go Monday to Thursday heading into Christmas, and then we will be back on the 27th with a show on Monday coming out of the Christmas weekend. Uh, and tell a friend that that can be your Christmas gift to us. Uh, just let some more people know about it as we continue to grow the channel. All right, we got prizes. Hoodie for first place. I Love Rye Package for second place. Let the marbles roll. It is on Friday afternoon. The marble race officially underway. Let's do it, Remus. All right, we're off. Sorry, I got to... I, I, one sec. All right, we're off. We're off. Look at this. The, uh, the, the largest... Oh, Michael Lay. Mike Lay with the early lead. What else? We got Wrench Doozer, Coffee and TV in there. Donnie Boy. Oh, I thought I saw Pionky Tonk in there. Great, great name. Uh, we're going into the funnel. Michael Lay does look like he's in first. Michael Lay in 97 Jam, getting a little bit of a nice lead on the rest of the marbles. Who else is in there? Art Cooper. Marshall Patterson. What's up, Marsh? Art Cooper. Poopy Pants. Hmm. What's Poopy Pants doing? Michael Lay in 97 Jam, though. They are our leaders right now making it around the first turn coming out of the funnel. Uh, I'm not sure if we've ever had our true wire-to-wire -wire leader, but I'll tell you what, if, it can, if Michael Lay and 97 Jam can continue their lead, we could have the first ever basically wire-to-wire -wire lead considering uh, how they got out of that funnel first. A slight lead, Michael Lay in first, 97 Jam in second, and then 210 marbles hot on their tail. Looking for some great prizes today on Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. We're going back into a smaller funnel right now. This is where things can get a little sketchy, especially when you've got 200 of them. Looks like Michael Capti got the nice move. Todd Cochran's still there. 97 jams in the mix. Michael Lay is in there as well. This is uh, one heck of a race. Uh, but the key now is to get low and get out of this funnel and down into the final stretch. Who will be the first marble? We get out of this funnel. It looks like it's uh, Ryan. What is it? <laughs> Ryan Friesen's clogged toilet. Wow. Ryan Friesen's clogged toilet's looking good. 97 <laughs> Jam is still there. <laughs> I'm sure I missed some sort of joke about Ryan Friesen, what he's doing. By the way, Friesen, what do you think about that Chiefs bet we made now, huh? 97 Jam still leading the way was second to Mike Lay going forward. He slowed down a little bit. Can 97 Jam get in first? It is a victory for 97 Jam. And then Michael Lay at the end comes in. The two marbles that first got out of the funnel ended up losing the lead and then regaining it at the end. Unbelievable race to finish up a huge week on Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Now, 97 Jam, you might be new. Um, give us a, uh, well, basically hit us up uh, either on Twitter or Instagram, uh, Sports Talk WPG, or maybe the easiest thing is to send us an email to winnipegsportstalk at gmail.com. Uh, we're very familiar with our friend Mike Lake. Congratulations to Mike. You're second place. 
uh, you can hit us up and we'll arrange to get you your prize as well. And uh, we'll wait for the uh, the final few marbles to make their way in. Uh, but man, an absolutely awesome, awesome finish to the week here on Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Sean 37 <laughs> and Aaron Desolets are taking their sweet ass time. I, I, it's amazing you could possibly, sometimes we have a prize for last. We almost should have done that. Uh, but yes, we're waiting for Sean 37 to join the party. Whoa. He's <laughs> way, way back. He's like stuck or something. I don't know exactly what. Oh, he just got stuck. They they burnt up the funnel. Um, so 97 Jam, congratulations. Mike Lay, congratulations to everyone else. We do this on Fridays. We get some great prizes from our sponsors and have just a fun way to finish up the program. So thanks so much uh, to you and all the newcomers that joined us for the first time today after uh, Paul Maurice resigned as head coach of the Winnipeg Jets. Game tonight. Maybe we'll see some of you down there. I'll be down there in 206 this evening. Looking forward to it. It's always a treat when Oveshkin comes, one of my all-time favorites. But this is a big night for the Jets, and we're going to see how this team handles um, probably a pretty sudden and shocking day for all of them coming to the rink this morning for a morning skate to hear that Paul Maurice has resigned. Huge thanks to Mike McIntyre, Brandon Rewicki, and Ken Weave for joining us on the program. And again, all we'd ask for you, make sure you're subscribed. Subscribe on the podcast as well. If sometimes you'd like to grab it on audio form, tell a friend about Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. And tonight, after the game, a legal curve goes up right after the uh, final buzzer. And then they'll hand it over to Kenny and Rennie. Always great content from the guys post-game for Winnipeg Jets Hockey. And we'll be back on Monday with the big show. I know a lot of people were excited to have Bob Irving on the show. Not as much as me. Um, Monday or Tuesday, we'll have Bob on. A little bit more talk about the incredible Bomber back-to-back Grey Cup win. And, of course, his amazing career as the voice of Blue Bomber football. Um, But today, with the Maurice News, we focused all in on the Jets. Thanks to everyone that's been with us. And thanks again to all of our sponsors. If you have the opportunity to support them, please do. Tell them Winnipeg Sports Talk sent you. F Apparel, Vita Health, Culligan Water, Manitoba Battery, Royal Sports. All that new bomber gear, championship gear is in the store right now. If you need uh, Christmas shopping done or just you need to cop it for the bomber fan of the family. Not Auto Corp. Little Brown Jug Brewing, few 1919s going down this weekend, that's for sure. Princess Auto, Boston Pizza, the Nick and Nicky DQ Group, Canadian Club Whiskey, available at your local Manitoba Liquor Marts, and of course our betting partner, Cool Bet Canada. Check the Lock Shop pod before you make your picks, and be careful making your picks this weekend because COVID is wreaking havoc on the National Football League and of course the NHL as well. Uh, Everyone, have an awesome weekend. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you Monday right back here, 1 p.m. live on YouTube, around 3.30 in your podcast feed on Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Thanks so much. Oh, my God. Shut it down. Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.